Tuesday, October 29th, 2019, at 3 o'clock. Let's call to order. Um, roll call. Alder Galvin? Here. Alder Lefebvre? Here. Alder Corpus Dax? Here. And Alder Dorf here. Um, approval of the agenda. I'll entertain a motion for approval of the agenda. Motion to approve. Okay, Alder, um, uh, moved by Alder Lefebvre, second by Alder Corpus Dax. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Approval of the minutes. So moved. Okay, the first is approval of the Finance Committee minutes from September 29th, 2019, moved by Alder Corpus Dax. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alder Galvin. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And now the approval of the Personnel Committee mini minutes from the October 8th, 2019 meeting. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Moved by Alder Corpus Dax. Second. Second by Alder Galvin. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right, regular business. Our first order of business is the report on the purchase of 22 vehicles for various city departments off of the 2019 State of Wisconsin Verdonet contract for $700,232. And, and is Rick speaking to that? Or uh, do you have any, does anyone have any questions on that? How many of those are being funded through bonding? The question was how many are being funded through bonding? I'm sorry, what was the question? Um, how many are being funded through bonding? Um, I believe all of these were bonded. Maybe out of the 22, maybe 17 were bonded. I don't have the exact number. Those are all going to the PD? Are they all going to the police department? No. No. Uh, on the handout that was included, It lists which department, uh, which vehicle belonged to which department. For police, there were 10 squad cars. Access to my computer, so and I don't have the paper stuff, so I'm just asking. Besides the PD, who else is having vehicles bonded? It's right in the column, nice. the first column. Okay. So just a list of the vehicles. It so doesn't see on here which were bonded and which were not. Right, which are not. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, are there any other questions? Otherwise, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. Moved by Alder Galvin, second by Alder Lefebvre to approve. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Request pre-approval to purchase new cars and light trucks that have been approved in the 2020 city budget through the state of Wisconsin vendor net contract and report the results back to finance committee after the purchases have been made. S sounds like a similar item, right? It's going to be a similar item. Um, same thing. Um, we go right off the state contract and as long as the information or the request has already been approved through the 2020 budget, um, th then it would give permission for um, the purchasing manager to move forward with those uh, bids and quotes. Okay. I'll entertain a motion unless there's question. Any more questions on that? Okay, moved by Alder Lefebvre. Is there a second by Alder Galvin? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. All right, consideration with possible action on a request by the Department of Public Works to amend the parking lot lease between Georgia Pacific and City of Green Bay for property adjacent to the West Garage. I understand Director Grenier would like to speak on this. For in excess of 30 years, uh, Georgia Pacific, through their Bay West Division, which is on West Mason Street, uh, they have some property behind the, the facility that's immediately adjacent to our salt shed that we have been able to enjoy uh, renting from them for equipment storage. They are in the process of trying to sell that uh, piece of property, so we may or may not be uh, losing our rental uh, storage space. But the existing contract that we have with them has a six-month out clause, 
and what they are requesting as part of this item is to change the termination from a six month out clause to a month to month rent arrangement and DPW supports that. Okay. Any questions? Sure. How much are we Dr. paying Galvin? for the, uh, the lease right now? $166.67 per month. $166. Is it just equipment we're storing there? Correct. And we have space for that equipment if uh, they sell the land. Mm, not really. We're actively looking to find a way to reconfigure the yard or potentially store equipment uh, closer to our lower lane facility over at the West Side Garage. So on the opposite side of Oneida. <clears throat> Take some upgrading to that site, I, I would imagine. Absolutely. One of the nice things about this is because it's sheltered in the back and protected from view. Uh, we're not, I don't want to say that we're grandfathered under zoning, uh, but if we were to go across Oneida Street, we would have to erect fences, and you know, there's going to be substantial investment uh, necessary for us to be able to store equipment over there. Whereas here, it's right in the yard, so it's easily accessible and it's already hidden from, from public view, so it's not an eyesore. Uh, been a very good partner with, with Georgia Pacific over the years. It's just this facility is extra for them. They don't need the building any longer, so they're actively marketing it. And as you know, uh, with properties that we bring uh, forward for consideration for development or redevelopment, if you have site control of the property, it makes marketing that property so much easier, and that's all they're looking to do is get rid of the old termination clause, which obligated them to six months before they could get in there and change it to a month to month. Uh, but again, they've been very, very transparent, very open with their communications. Uh, they're not kicking us out by any stretch of the imagination. They're just serving notice that they are trying to actively market the property and we may have to vacate at some point. Is there any further discussion? I'll entertain a motion to approve the request. So moved. so moved by Alder Corpus Stacks. Second. Second by Alder Galvin. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Consideration with possible action on a request to fill the following replacement positions and all subsequent vacancies resulting from internal transfers. An administrative clerk for Parks, Rec, and Forestry. Are there any questions on this position? Okay, and I'll entertain a motion. Motion, motion to approve by Alder Galvin. Second. Second by Alder Corpus Dax. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And then for item number five, it's consideration with possible actions on the request for the 2020 reclassifications. Um, and the recommendation um, from staff is to discuss these during the individual department's 2020 budget approval rather than discussing these all in one lump. So do you, does this committee see that that's a good plan? You think it's a good plan? Okay, so can we move that? We will, okay, Alder, Alder Lefebvre has moved to discuss during the individual department's 2020 budget approval. Is there a second? Second by Alder Galvin, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Um, so before we do the review and approval of the mayor's recommended 2020 budget, including out-of-state travel requests, I'd really like to say thank you to a number of people, particularly first to Pam Manley and D Diane Ellenbacher for all their hard work, and then to all of the department heads that have put in so much time on this budget, and to our mayor for presenting us with, with a budget that is a very well thought out, and I think will be a very good budget for this city. I also want to, in particular, Say thank you to Alder Corpus Dax, Alder Lefebvre, Alder Galvin, Alder Brunette, Alder Vanderleest, Alder Stoyer, and Alder Scannell for taking their precious time to come and to go over this budget prior to our meeting next week. I think that the people that you represent should be proud of you for coming to do this, and I want to just express that uh, in, in open forum here. All right, I believe that we have a presentation first by uh, yes. by the mayor. So,
educational episode is going to be. Here it is. <laughs> no, that's all right. I don't think it's quite up yet. Did you hit the podium? Yeah. Yeah, well, I don't no. do that. She does that. Oh, okay. And then. Oh, so. So you should be all good. Do I need to do? Do I need oh. to do anything? Because I can't see anything down here. So, send live. Oh, click that. Send live. Did it go off? I think it's computer. showing a different screen. <clears throat> yeah. Well, we sort of see it on mine. There it is. There we go. Click right. buttons until it works. <laughs> Good job. All good? Sure. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I thanks. already introduced you, so you were out of the room at the time. Here I am. Well, thanks so much for uh, convening this, uh, this meeting today. Thanks for having me as a guest of the committee. Um, I've run through this presentation a couple times with the public, um, but happy to do it again here for the committee and, and other alders who have not yet had the chance to see it. Um, so this is obviously the, the 2020 city budget. Um, a real point of emphasis that I would make is, you know, we are uh, modestly increasing the mill rate and we are refraining from using one-time money uh, city reserves to fill any gaps. Um, and so my preference would be, my strong preference would be for the council to recognize that fact and stay on that course uh, because that's why we are in the position that we are in uh, is because of one-time spending and because of not you know taking some some modest mill rate increases in recent years also note here at the front end and I've said this publicly and privately for a very long time <clears throat> the city of Green Bay has seen a dramatic decrease in state support going back 20 years adjusting for inflation in the neighborhood of 12 million dollars and when you're talking about a $110 million budget, um, that's real money, very significant, and, and really can't be overlooked. So in conversations that I've had with the state legislature, with the Joint Finance Committee, I have said, you know, it'd be great if you could restore that state aid, recognizing that that's unlikely to happen. Um, it would be great if we had, um, you know, access to a local sales tax to diversify the revenue sources that are available um, to city government, to village government, um, avail us of the same tools that, that the county has currently, and all counties across the state of Wisconsin have. Um, also just recognizing the fact that, that we are under tight property tax levy limits here in the state of Wisconsin, some of the tightest in the nation, um, and recognize why that's the case. You know, we have, uh, as a state, we have high property taxes, but again, it's because we don't have diversified revenue sources at the local level. We are over-reliant on property taxes. Um, budget priorities. First and foremost, maintaining support for our public safety entities here in the, in the city of Green Bay. Um, increasing the number of police officers from 180 to 185. Um, shifting blacktop and joint ceiling um, from the general fund to uh, the wheel tax creating a coordinator of city resilience and also creating a diversity and inclusion coordinator in our human resources department. Um, so those new police officers, as I said, moving from 180 to 185 by July 1 of 2020. Um, this is something that I've heard in a, in a number of community meetings ac across the city. Traffic enforcement continues to crop up as an issue. Um, we've seen a, a, you know, a drop off in community policing activities because of the fact um, that we are not at that 194 level. Uh, the chief and his team, you know, made the request to go back to 194, and I totally uh, appreciate the fact that, um, that that's where we should be ultimately. This budget creates a path back to, uh, to that number of 194. Um, as I said, getting us to 185 by July 1. <clears throat> um, as I already noted, we are recommending a shift um, in terms of blacktop and joint ceiling support from the general fund to the wheel tax. Um, Director of Public Works, Steve Grenier, requested um, you know, a, a significant increase in those funds 
um, really just restoring what we've done in the past, but there was a significant cut to both funds in the 2019 budget. To be able to fulfill that request, it made the most sense um, to me to move that support to the wheel tax. Um, the city resilience position, city resilience generally, I think it's really essential for us to recognize what we've been hearing from neighborhoods across the city of Green Bay um, in terms of flooding that they've experienced. Put somebody in place, supported by the stormwater utility and by private grant funding who will be working on short-term and long-term projects to make us a more resilient city, address those, those flooding issues, and also um, you know, create and work to create uh, more renewable energy sources for the city of Green Bay and for our residents. Um, also, recognizing the value that our street trees have to our stormwater utility, we are shifting support um, for the forestry budget within the, the Parks Department um, to the stormwater utility. The diversity and inclusion position within human resources, I think, is again a really critical need for us as an organization, also a need for us as a community. So this person would be within uh, the Human Resources Department. Um, the bulk of the position would be working um, with the department um, to uh, make the entity uh, of our uh, City of Green Bay an open, inclusive, welcoming organization, and then also partnering with community organizations and leaders to send that, west, that message um, that the, the community at large is also very interested in these activities. Um, Director Falls can you know, touch on this, but I know that there have been some preliminary conversations about surrounding um, governmental entities that are interested in, in doing some of this work as well. Um, this budget also establishes a, a standalone IT department. Currently, IT is, is underneath the umbrella of administrative services. I think it's critical for us to recognize the important role that information technology plays for an organization of our uh, size and, and like, and so we are recommending the creation of uh, that IT department with a full-fledged director, somebody who would report directly to the mayor and engage in, in senior staff activities and meetings. Just a few numbers for you all, um, an increase in total expenditures at 2.22 percent, general fund going up 2.39 percent, um, and then of course the, the bottom number, the assessed city tax rate moving from 916 to 945 is the recommendation, 3.23 percent increase. This gives you a sense for some of the fixed costs that are going up, things that are um, a little bit out of our hands, health and dental increasing $387,000, Wisconsin retirement system increasing $570,000. As I noted last night, we're lucky in the state of Wisconsin to have a fully funded retirement system. This is, you know, sort of the downside of that is we are forced to pay up for it. So that's a that's a significant cost for the city. Um, elections. It's a it's a presidential election year coming coming up here in 2020. So a significant increase in the elections budget. Sanitation disposal fees going up. Um, at one time, recycling was a revenue source for us. It's now a significant cost. Um, tipping fees increasing as well. Software maintenance another uh, significant cost there at $106,000. Also a, a pretty dramatic reduction in state utility aid because of the decommissioning of the Pulliam Power Plant. Um, so that's in the amount of $357,000. A bit of good news at the bottom, an increase in general transportation aids coming from the state of Wisconsin, 10% uh, increase there amounting to $305,000. This just shows the, the calculation in terms of what's allowable with our, um, with our levy limits, rounded to the nearest tenth, an increase in 2.6%. Um, and then we do have the debt adjustment that allows us to go up to the 3.2%. This maintains the uh, expenditure restraint program payment um, projected at uh, $1.5 million. And just some, some more numbers here on, on the levy limit and how it's calculated based on Net new construction, that number of 1.13 or 1.14%. Uh, we are lucky to be a large community that continues to grow. Um, it's modest growth compared to much smaller communities, um, but, uh, but we are lucky to be growing. And then this slide notes uh, where we were 
in terms of uh, our budget after department request came in. So we had a gap to close of four, almost $4.6 million between uh, department requests and what was allowable <coughs> for us in terms of you know, increasing levy limit, maintaining uh, expenditure restraint program payment. So some of the major moves that, were, that we took was to uh, remove equipment from the operations budget and move them to uh, the capital budget, move forestry to stormwater, as I noted. Um, police staffing not going all the way up to 194 was a savings for us. Uh, general transportation aids, I mentioned, that number came in late, so that was a, that was a bump for us. Um, fire chief recommended keeping a few positions open within the, the fire department. That uh, was also a significant savings for us, moving some of those costs for road maintenance from the general fund to the wheel tax, um, some miscellaneous revenues and expenses reflected there. And then important to note that, that we are unfortunately recommending um, an increase for general employees of 1% rather than 2%, which has been done in recent years. Um, there is a savings there of $57,000. In the 2020 budget, a larger savings in 2021, if if that's the um, the path that we go down. Also, wanted to note the number of positions that were requested and left unfilled. So, in the neighborhood of a, around $800,000 in new requests came through, and we were unable to fill them. So, in the law department, an assistant city attorney, a couple of um, assessors building inspector, uh, civil engineer, and an electrician within the Department of Public Works. This is just a little bit of a more detailed slide. I mentioned this number of $12 million inflation adjusted drop in state aid going back to 1999, 2000. Uh, significant piece of, of our city budget if, if that support had been maintained. And then this just kind of breaks down expenditures by department here. Uh, you know, almost 50% of the budget going to public safety and other large chunk to public works and parks. And then another way to reflect some of those budget expenditures, 47% uh, going to salaries, uh, almost 21% for fringes and benefits. Uh, not unique for an organization of, of this kind, um, but obviously just wanted to make the point that, you know, employees are, um, are hugely important to the operations of this organization and um, you know a big cost as well <coughs> showing a property valuation growth since 2010 uh, over six billion dollars in uh, assessed property here in the city of Green Bay as I mentioned there's uh, some modest growth in that area which is a good thing and then this just reflects the the city tax rate trend uh, from 2011 to what's been proposed in 2020 uh, in the high eights to the, the mid nines here. And then this slide compares us to communities of like size. I think, um, you know, we oftentimes want to compare us to surrounding communities, uh, but it's really not fair to an, uh, a city of our size and our age with our infrastructure needs and, and all the rest, public safety obligations. Um, so Appleton, they just did a, a revaluation that actually dropped their mill rate as a result of that. Eau Claire, I believe they did the same thing. Uh, Madison revaluation, so they're below nine. They were at nine three. Milwaukee, ten five eight. Oshkosh, ten seven two, and, and Racine significantly higher at uh, fourteen point nine two. Uh, next steps. We're at the next step. Um, so this is our obviously our joint finance and personnel committee meeting. Just for those who are following along, um, the common council will be taking up the budget uh, next Tuesday at four thirty p.m. So that's what I have in terms of uh, presentation. Again, thanks to. Um, Alder Dorf, Chair Dorf, and uh, members of the committee, the rest of the alders who are gathered here today. Uh, another thanks to departments, heads, staff, uh, in particular finance staff for all the work that they've done in, in rolling this thing up. So thanks a lot. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. So we have 211 pages to get through. So let's be efficient. The first item is Common Council on page 13. So let's take a moment to go to page 13 and I'll entertain any questions. Well, then continue turning it after page 13. Yes, that's where it begins. 
Are there any concerns or questions on the Common Council budget? Uh, a constituent asked me why did the dental insurance go up 31%. I am thinking, did an additional person take that? Yes, an additional alder chose to take that. That was the response that I gave. So it's the only question I had had on it. Any other questions? Am I moving too fast for you guys? Yeah. All right. All right, I will entertain a motion to approve this portion of, of the budget. Motion to, motion to approve the Common Council portion of the bu budget by Alder Galvin, second by Alder Lefebvre. Um, the only people that will be voting will be this committee. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, motion carries. The next part will be page 17, begins on page 17, and that's the mayor's office. Are there any questions on that portion? Okay, Alder Galvin. The uh, community relations assistant, uh, I believe this is the newly created position. It's a hybrid or it's a, no? Yes, no? Okay, uh, Celestine. Yes, Alder Galvin, that is a newly created position we hired in the summer. Okay, I'm getting some people asking me questions about this position, Ex exactly where did it come from and, and it says community relations, but what, what, what's its purpose? Right, so the purpose of the position is to really be the outreach um, arm of the mayor's office to the constituency um, as well as to alders. And so essentially this, this is a new uh, position. Um, once upon a time, Mayor Schmidt did have, did have a mayor's assistant who did a lot of those duties. What was that, um, who, who had that position last? Andre Jacques. The mayor's assistant position. So that was quite some time ago. There wasn't there. Um, was it Mary Heft? I'm sorry. Okay. Diana. I just want to add to that. Um, last year's budget, there was a full four FTEs, and now um, this year's budget has a full four FTEs again. It was just renaming of some positions. You're right. Last year they had two part-time positions, and they, they had two part-time positions that were executive secretaries, and then we had one. Uh, full-time person that was a receptionist. So now we just have one full-time executive secretary and one community relations assistant. So we still have the same number of bodies. We just have renamed some of those positions and shifted some people. So I just want to let you know that it's the same. It's still four FTEs year over year. How is this new community relations assistant working out? Uh, I think he's doing a great job, personally. He's helping me. He's helped me quite a bit. I've just been asking for a meeting for three months now, and I, I haven't gotten it yet. And and, and oh. this is this is related to the the flooding on East River. We had a meeting earlier this year with department heads there, and I've had neighbors asking when it's going to happen. They're becoming insistent, and so I'm just wondering if it's something to do with just getting everything organized, or there's that that much work coming in that you know it's it's. It's not happening yet. Well, I think perhaps this should be addressed with the, um, the mayor or Celestine. Yeah. Yes. Uh, mayor Gamrick. Uh, yeah, Alder, it, that's a fair question. It's not something that has fallen on the shoulders of the community re relations assistant, though. Um, we'd, we'd be happy to put that meeting together. Um, you know, you haven't talked to me directly about no, it. I so we'll, we'll take care of it. Okay, so in the future, that kind of, so that's not what that position is for? It's, it's a conversation not just with the mayor's office, but also with um, the Community and Economic Development Department. Okay, thank you. Alder Stoyer. Thank you, Chair. I was just wondering, uh, maybe Diana, you could answer this. You, you said there's been a little rearrangement. Now you have four positions here as opposed to what we had last year. Well, what are the savings, if, we, if any, from last year to this year with this uh, budget? Is there any? Um, in total, the mayor's budget went up $16,000 in the salaries line, $16,203. Um, and every, all four positions had some changes. Um, the mayor's budget went up $5,400 year over year, and that was the pre-approved um, new salary for the mayor. Um, we also had some change in people who just had steps up, step ups, and the 2% is what really mm -hmm. has changed that department. 
um, the executive secretary's position going from 37 and a half to 40 hours and um, a different salary. Um, hers went up $6,400. The community relations um, position went up $2,400 year over year. But again, that includes a step and a 2%. So it really wasn't a higher wage. It's just the, it's really bringing up, up to 2020 um, rates versus 2019. And then we also have also the, um, um, the Celestines of the world, of Chief, uh, Chief, um, um, and her, uh, Chief of Staff, thank you. Um, and her position went up also about $2,500, and that's year over year, and that's just a step up and the 2%. So they were, it's really not the rates, what did you say? 1%. One, one percent. Well, it's the per 2% for the first ten, um, nine months, and then 1% for the last three months in the 2020 budget. So all four positions went up, but they were all pre-approved. Three of them were through the payment plan, um, the salary pay plan, and then the other one was the mayor's approved budgets. So the total is 16, Correct. Year over year increase. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions on the mayor's budget? Um, Alder Lefebvre. I know we vote. I know we voted last year on uh, increasing the salary and the benefits. I just think with such a tight budget, I hate to say this, the mayor sitting there, but I don't know. I I don't I don't like that. I have a question on that. That we are paying more for the mayor salary. It's it's what increase was that again? Mm. I, elderly, if I believe under law, there's only a certain time we can make that increase, and that is the time that we made it, we voted on it, and that is the only time that we can change that. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Oh, then, I know. I know. I just wanted to bring that up that I just, you know, I voted no, and I just, I have qualms on this. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or concerns? If not, I'll entertain, or do you have another one? I would just have Okay. As far as the mayor's salary goes, that was neglected for years and years and years. And, and uh, I, I, th we voted on this when we didn't know who the next mayor was going to be, so there would be no personalities involved. Mm -hmm. and, and this is a salary, when you look at the amount of responsibility, the amount of work that goes into this job, I, I still think it's woefully underfunded, compar uh, especially if you start comparing it to other communities. So, um, you know, although it's, it's a tight time, I just think we have to be reasonable and understand that um, you know, there has to be just compensation. Even though he's a public servant and he wants to serve the public, there has to be just compensation for his position. Yeah, I just know people are going to probably question some, but I know. Thank you. Any other comments? All right, then at this time I'll entertain a motion to approve the mayor's budget. Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Elder Corpus Dax. I'll second that. Um, all those in favor? I opposed. Motion carries. All right. Page 21, it, where it begins is administrative services, including finance, clerk, assessor, purchasing elections, board of review, and document center. And if I come upon a section in which I need to address a change in position, just draw, draw that to my attention, please. OK? All right, so page 32. So I believe this is a, the new department that we've created. Um, no, this is, no. The same, this is the same department that we've always had. Well, all we it. did was take it I, informational tech, information technology or IT out of that and have created a separate um, budget. They're in the next section to be okay. um, reviewed. So IT has been pulled out. Otherwise, okay. it is the same as in the past. Okay, so it's information technology and services. Are there any questions? Nope. Uh, no, no, this. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I? I it went too far. Yep, Thank we're you. on the administrative services. Sorry, page 21, which I'm sure you all are at. All right, any questions on administrative services? Yes, Alder Stoyer. Sure, I might be asking this a few times, but I just want to know uh, as far as the rearranging in the department, you know, what, what savings are we coming in with? Is there anything uh, that we can talk about on that as far as Which department are you talking about? IT. We're Just not, uh, I, was, I made a mistake. You made a mistake. Yeah, okay. we're back on page 21. Yeah, you can ask that question Never in, mind. in a few minutes. I'll wait. You can wait. Okay. All right. 
alder corpus dex as far as the seasonal salaries going up 132 percent which from last year's budget to this year's or to 2020 what are those That's seasonal a good question. salaries um, there are two items that are drawing um, increasing those salaries um, the, the bulk of it is from elections. Last year we had $110,000 of seasonal salaries and we've gone up to two hundred and fifty-two. So $140,000 of that increase was um, from elections. Okay. And then the other portion is um, the city um, is, will be taking tax collection this year. So we will have um, about four plus weeks of tax collection in our clerk's office and we are um, estimating four temporary employees to, to take tax collection in December. Good question. Oh, and I was going to say, that actually would be the same thing for next year. It'll be Jan. I'm sorry, this increase would be for 2020, so this would be January, and then it'd also be for December um, uh, next year. Okay. Right. Any other questions about administrative services? Yes, Alder Galvin. Um, Diane, if, if you could point out with that tax collection, um, and many may not be aware of it, when we approved that, it was because it would have a financial benefit for the city, was that not that right? Correct. That is correct. Um, there was no other reason other than um, from the time the county collects it and by the time they settle the money that they've collected, they have now decided to um, hold it for two weeks and they settle, settle with the uh, municipalities every other week. And we felt that based on the timing of us collecting and get the money in the bank, that we would collect more interest than it would cost for us to collect the money. So we feel that there is a interest, uh, their benefit in um, for, to the city to collect the interest. And essentially, we're covering the, those positions and having some money left over. Correct. Correct. So it was a financial benefit beneficial for us to bring in more money like that. Correct. And this is to sign an agreement with them to either they collect the first installment or the city collects first installment. They will continue to collect second installment. Um, um, delinquent personal properties we will continue to collect, but it's just first installment, and we are not the only municipality this year that chose to go on their own. Um, it's the city of Green Bay, um, Village of Howard, and Denmark. Those three municipalities have all decided to take their, on their own tax collections um, this year. I got one question from a constituent. He asked, he said he used he pays his taxes at a bank, which I didn't know you could do. But mm -hmm. and he wants to know if he could still do that. Okay, so no. If he's in the city of Green Bay this year, you will have to come to the city hall or mail your um, payment to city hall, or you can pay it online with a with a credit card. Um, it is a brand new system that Brown County has moved to, and this year it will only allow one. Um, one location, which would be Brown County, to have um, banks collect on their behalf. Um, it is a goal in the f in future years, okay. maybe to have banks be able to re um, be able to segregate if you're with the city of Green Bay, and those bank collections would come to the city. But for this year, it is going to be limited to only city of Green Bay will only be um, our city hall clerk's office. So that's going to be important to publicize that, so that Correct. that we know. Okay. So we have signs that we're going to be putting on our doors. Um, okay. We will be putting that out on social media. Um, that information will be on the tax bill. Good. All right. Any other questions? Diane, the, the, uh, there's a significant increase percentage-wise in overtime. Is that due to the election? Or upcoming election? Um, it would be, um, I'm going to look to Chris Teske. Um, I think that overtime is going to be for tax collections of your own employees, or is that going to be for elections? And it is, it's $7,200, it, it's a over $400, 400% increase, but it's about $7,200, is that right? Yeah. Right, okay, thank you. Okay, Alder Lafay first. I don't have a question, I don't have a question, I just wanted to say with the elections, the reason too I believe it's up because more and more people are voting absentee and it takes a lot more time to go through those. So the absentee is just keeps, you know, more and more people, especially next you know, year is going to be a big election, so. Alder Stoyer. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Alder Galvin, you were just mentioning about the, the difference, the monies and that. Was, was there a number that was brought out as far as what we're, what we're realizing with this? You were talking about the difference 
with the monies that, that are, you know, with this increase right here? Was we, there, we, they talked about it at Did we get some kind of a number meeting. on that? I don't know if I heard that. We had a variable number. It depends upon how many people pay, pay early. Right. Um, but uh, based on past performance, um, the increase or what we would be taking in would be more than enough to cover the salaries and, and anything else that would be related to it. And I don't. Diane? Um, we, again, also it depends upon the, um, the rate in which we're going to receive as this money is being invested. Um, it, it, was, it was anywhere between, we thought we could, could collect anywhere between fifty to $75,000 more in interest in a period of about two months, and then we would back off um, expenses, and again, we probably um, estimated high on our expenses of about 25000 So we do believe that within a two-month period, we will realize anywhere from twenty-five dollars to $50,000 more by um, taking uh, collections in-house. Great. All right, I'll entertain a motion to approve this portion of the budget. Administrative services. Motion by Elder Galvin. Second by Elder Corpus Dax. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Now, Elder Stoyer. Information technology and equipment replacement, page 32. Yes. That I think Joe would probably like to speak to. Okay. Um, to go along with this change that we made for this year's budget. Thank you. Director Falls. Yeah, you'll see there's a memo in your in your packet that talks about reclassification of the IT administrator to the IT director and then the systems analyst position to the assistant IT director and then we're creating the IT department. I really, I think the main reason behind this is to have a direct line of communication between the IT department and the mayor and to make sure that IT is integrated with all the services that we provide um, and then also to move um, closer to becoming a smart city. Uh, you do have the job descriptions in here that outline the two positions so if you have any questions on those feel free to ask them and that's kind of the the overall summary of it okay i'll entertain any questions you're good okay two new positions per se or classifications just looking at Granted, it's hard to put a number on things as far as financial at times, but you know, with the efficiencies that are realized, uh, maybe Director Falls, you could just talk to that point a little bit as far as what the city may realize and maybe savings down the road. Is there any any way to put a handle on that or a number on that? Yeah, I think it's tough to do. Um, one thing I can speak to is that um, the IT department has put together um, quite a few software that the city's already using. I think there's already been some cost savings with the programs they put together. Um, they could probably speak to that more than I can, but I think also they've taken out their uh, contractual services down from 75000 to 10000 so they've already been saving quite a few dollars for the city. Um, and then going forward, it is hard to put a dollar value on that, but I think we're just hoping we become more efficient through all of our service through the utilization of, um, of IT. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> Any other questions on this portion? Yeah, Alder Galvin. On uh, page 37, um, software maintenance, it, I think this is a mistake. It went from uh, $260,000 in 2019 up to 275,000 and change yeah. and they're indicating a 63% yeah, increase. They that, circled that too. Um, I can correct that. It's yeah. taking 63% over the 2019 original budget to the 20 budget. So it's not looking at actuals, it's budget over budget. So you're going from 169,000 up to 275,000. Look at column 3 here. What's that? Look at column 3. That's the actual. Oh, you're looking at the projection. Oh, yeah, I mean the rev yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. I'll entertain a motion to approve the information technology and equipment replacement portion of the budget. So moved, so moved by Alder Lefebvre, second by Alder Galvin. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Law, page 42. Any questions or concerns on law? Yes, Alder Burnett. Um, for 
city attorney, was there any consideration to increase contractual services for the ongoing Oneida trust issue that we've been working on? Um, attorney Chavez. Uh, so because we do not know the, the um, extent to which the city will be involved in litigation going forward, there is no way for us to anticipate that need. We've been kind of doing it on an ad hoc basis. And so if we were to increase the contractual services, we wouldn't really have a number to, to go with. Um, and especially because we are moving towards um, negotiating a, a service agreement, um, that wasn't something that we anticipated um, continuing if the, if the negotiations are successful. Okay. Seeing no other hands, um, I'd entertain a motion to approve the law portion. Motion approved by Alder Galvin. Second by Alder Dorf. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Municipal Court, page 49. <coughs> Any questions or concerns about? Municipal Court. All right, seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Motion to approve by Alder Galvin. Second by Alder Lefebvre. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Human Resources, page 55. Are there some renamed positions? Or this would be another one, right? Okay. Um, and uh, Director Falls, you want to speak to the position? Yeah, sure. We do have a reclassification of an HR assistant to a um, diversity and inclusion coordinator. And really what we've found is that in our department we've had two assistants, um, and we've noticed there's been more automation with the recruiting side of things, so we can move forward with one HR assistant. So to save some funds, we wanted to reclass that assistant position to a, di to a diversity and inclusion coordinator. And that position is going to focus on recruiting and attracting uh, diverse candidates, um, also with the training for diversity and inclusion for our employees, and then also community outreach um, with the city as well. And I think the mayor really said best where it's really sending a message to the city that we embrace people of all different backgrounds to work for the city, but also live in the city as well. So we're, that's the reclassification that we have. Um, I think the... The fiscal impact is, I think it shows about 3000 but really I think depending on when the, the start date is and what the hiring salary is, it'll be closer to a zero impact on the, on the budget. Okay. Any questions on the human resources part? Um, yes, Alder Burnett. Thank you, uh, Alder Dorf. Now I noticed the fiscal impact would be relatively flat for this year, but that's sort of uh, the result of delaying the hire until May 2020. The reality, though, is that if this is a budget, this is a position that the city will maintain into the years ahead. The annual salary is based on $33 an hour at full time. Um, where did we come up with that amount that this position would be uh, would require that pay scale. Uh, Director Pulse? Yeah, for all of our either new positions or reclassifications, we do send that to our, our consultant at Carlson Detman that does an evaluation, looks at the job responsibilities, and then places it in our salary schedule and where it would go. So that's where that number came from. And that would be, I believe, a hiring range between, usually it's between one and four in our steps. Thank, Alder Burnett. Thank you. What is the process for posting this position? Is this position uh, something that there have been internal discussions that uh, this position will be filled by a member of our current staff? I can't say definitively if it will be or not. Uh, what we do for most of our positions is we'll post it internally and then um, we'll then post it externally. I would imagine that this will be posted externally. Thank you. Okay, Alder Stroyer. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Director Falls, um, I know that Appleton has had a position like this for the last 20 years, and I'm just wondering if you've reached out to them and found out 
what efficiencies or what what it has done for the value in the in the city of Appleton? Have you reached out to them at all? Yeah, we've had general discussions with them. I think um, some of the feedback we received from them is to really have the position focus on recruitment and focus on internally your policies with um, the organization, have that be the main focus, and then from there really um, work on the community outreach as a, a secondary factor of that. Okay, any other questions? Entertain a motion to approve human resources. Motion to approve by Elder Galvin, second by Elder Lefebvre. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Page 63. Community and Economic Development and Equipment Replacement. Are there any questions on this? Yes, um, Director Feltz. So there is one position, the, the housing administrator. I just want to make it clear that that position does not affect the levy and doesn't have any impact on that. And it has been approved by the Green Bay Housing Authority. So okay. this memo is more informational, but there's a change to the table of organization. That's why it's in there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Alder Stoyer. Just to refresh, I, I may be missing it, but I know we were talking about another inspector coming in, right? I mean, that's we were trying to hire another position. Was Dr. That, Bonk. Dr. Bonk. Sure. So, yes, um, we did request that uh, a reclass of uh, one of our building inspectors to a uh, uh, commercial uh, building inspector and then the addition of another building inspector um, that was based upon the the volume of permits uh, that we are doing in the city it's gone up substantially over the last few years um, and I believe that we um, would like to be uh, again more proactive in terms of our inspections and just you know customer service turnaround time so that was requested um, but, but with that um, as you saw in the new positions were, were left out of the budget One more thing. Okay. Direct, Director Vonk, I was just going to ask, I know there's uh, some things going on with, uh, with inspection as far as going over processes and such. I don't know if that affects any of this at all, because I know you're going through a whole, it might be a customer service initiative or what have you, but I know that some of us have concerns with some of the activity that's gone on between inspection and, and citizens. So with that being said, I'm just wondering if if that's uh, factored in here in any way? Um, not directly. I, I think overall some of the um, concerns we're discussing just about our operating procedures when it comes to our housing and zoning inspection and in terms of uh, processes that we, we follow for making sure our properties are, are maintained. Uh, this would be more focused on a, a building inspector position. Um, I, I know Director Falds right now is, is working uh, in the community um, with uh, a bunch of um, business owners and citizens, um, you know, trying to work on that interaction between business owners and, and the city, and I know inspection is, is part of that. Um, you know, I think, again, one of the reasons that we requested is to, to expedite, um, you know, the timeliness in, in terms of when we can be out for scheduling inspections um, and reviewing plans and being able to turn it uh, around as quickly as possible. Sure. Uh, director, uh, with that being said, you feel that with this position that uh, the city or at your department will be able to handle uh, the numbers of uh, calls and requests of your department for, for this type of position or positions? Yeah, I, I, I think we anticipate, I mean, we, we have so far uh, in terms of being able to, to absorb that. Um, one of the things that we may um, look at and maybe come back depending on, on where our numbers lie, um, you know, next year. Um, potentially uh, the summer is really our busy season um, and so we may look depending on, on where our budget is at at that time uh, for maybe some part-time uh, assistance to help out with some of the uh, the clerical and, and follow-up inspections um, that would allow some of our full-time staff to, to concentrate on their job so um, we may be coming back at, at that time uh, to look for some solutions thank you okay Alder Galvin uh, Dr. Vonk um, and I've also had some interaction with uh, some citizens about inspection issues and, and um, not happy with the procedures necessarily. 
Uh, but after talking to them, it, it seems like sometimes it's, it's inspection, it's DPW, um, and, and it seems sometimes that in talking to our citizens, and you know, they don't do this a lot, but it seems like almost some of our departments are siloed so much that we don't know what the other department's doing. So when a citizen puts in for permits and such, and someone comes out after two or three weeks and says, ah, no, this needs to be redone, and they get it done, and they think they're good to go, and then someone from a different department comes and tells them, no, this is wrong, this needs to be done. And what their angst is that they've had contractors on the hook for sometimes two, three, four, five months waiting to start projects, and it's this delay, 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 instead of everything being done at once. And I, segueing with that being said, I guess what I'm looking at is it, it seems to me inspection, and maybe with DPW, we seem to be more in a reactionary type mode instead of in a proactive type mode um, and I'm just wondering obviously tight budget again this year but as we're pushing like for bonding looking for a five-year plan can we start post I'm hoping the city will, will turn into looking at a five-year budgeting plan so we can start looking at anticipating and improving our staffing levels to get it to the point where we can be more reactive more responsive and better serve the public we have out there and I'm just wondering if you've given any thought to that uh, so I think um, Director Grenier and I have, have worked, um, you know, on some of our operating procedures. I, I know our chief building official um, has been putting together just standard operating procedures in terms of just, um, you know, getting it down on paper, just the expectations for um, policies and processes and, and when um, it's expected for, for follow-up. I think in terms of the customer service, um, you know, as, as Director Falds had mentioned about the IT, um, you know, building uh, our backup host system, our Eclipse system, I, I think we've gotten better in terms of providing additional information on it. Um, you know, working with public works that we're sharing, we're talking off the same, um, you know, basically database so we know where, where plans are at, where projects are at, and can have a, a better um, more direct answer to, to a customer in, in terms of you know where a project might be held up or, or what things are, are still coming um, you know I, I think it's right no secret the uh, the DNR has been on, on top of us in terms of some things for enforcement when it comes to erosion control and things like that so I mean we need to be very vigilant about upholding those standards um, but in terms of, of, of working with our departments together I think um, you know we've had additional discussions about how we can you know use that database to make sure that right when we tell a contract or something or have expectations of what needs to be done and when it needs to be done um, there's some clarity um, I think again builders homeowners are willing to play by the rules but they need to know what they are and so we're working to make sure that those are, are more upfront um, and standardized I think in terms of the how that relates a little bit to um, you know proactive versus reactive I would say um, our from the housing and zoning side, um, we're definitely much still pretty much in, in a reactive mode. Um, we respond to complaints. Um, we, we don't have the, the resources really to go out and, and do proactive sweeps of neighborhoods. Um, you know, I, I will say I think you know if our inspectors are out responding to a complaint and, and they see something, um, you know, again we always prioritize health safety. Um, if there's an immediate issue, they're not going to turn a, a blind eye to it. Um, but in terms of you know going out and, and doing you know block by block or neighborhood by neighborhood, we do not have the resources uh, to do that at this time. Um, you know, even the, the thought of having, you know, interns or somebody part-time to do it um, aren't doing it because in, in the essence then it just creates a, a much greater caseload um, of what our inspectors can handle at, at this time being right now. So um, we, do, we do operate in um, a reactive manner, but I think um, in terms of prioritizing, it's always the ones that impact health safety that go to the top of the list to make sure um, our inspectors are on top of that. I've certainly had no Working with the inspectors has, has been a pleasure. Um, they're very responsive, but it's 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 disheartening when citizens and let's face it, for every citizen that complain, how many see something and all they're going to do is gripe about it. And when you realize exactly how much of that goes on, or just walking up and down the streets, um, and you see all these these things that need to be uh, looked at, you know, I mean, we have a fire department which has the staffing so they can go out and inspect fire alarms and inspect buildings and make sure they're all up to code and everything else like that. Um, and so I, I guess, again, I'm, I'm emphasizing, again, tight budget year. We're looking at more tight budget years, but I'm hoping that as some of these TIFs and things go away, 
we'll have more resources to start adding on to some of our departments so that we, you know, because we talk about wanting to make this a community people want to come to. Do they want to come to it if they want to build a house and it's a protracted process to do it, where it'd be easier to build somewhere else? Do they want to come here and the houses in their same neighborhood are not up to code? And so, uh, again, I'm, I'm not pitching stones here. I'm just, I guess I'm pitching that maybe we need to, uh, not maybe, we definitely need to start thinking about being, developing departments that could be more proactive in the future. Thank you. Alder Stoyer. Thank you, Chair. Uh, piggybacking on what Alder Galvin said, uh, Director Vonk, I, I, I know it's, for example, this is part of the proactive approach, but as far as um, site plans, you know, I know that community development, public works and inspection sign off on site plans. Is that still a process? Uh, yes. So generally, um, site plans are come to our office and then are routed through our office. Um, in, in general, we, we do send off uh, the primary um, reviewers in terms of getting the details come from our department, uh, the Department of Public Works, um, you know, police, fire, water, I mean, also get not notified. Generally don't have uh, much in the way of comments um, because we are generally checking for those, um, but we generally route them through our department, circulate them, and then collect them back. So I think in terms of customer service, there's a point of, of contact for uh, that customer. Okay. Oh, just yes, real quick, I'll I'm sorry. Sure. Just, just asking though, as far as timeliness on that too, and we're talking about customer service, and I think um, moving forward, I agree with Alder Galvin that we need to be very proactive with the citizenry, and you know, we've noticed a number of things where, you know, I know it's complaint driven, but you know, we need to be very proactive here. So we'll, we'll keep that in mind. Thank you. Okay. Going back to the, the budget. Um, I'll entertain a motion for the community and economic development equipment placement portion of the budget. Motion to approve by Alder Lefebvre, second by Alder Galvin. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Police and equipment replacement, page 78. I would like to say that um, I'm glad to see that increase in staffing, and I do understand that the table of organization remains at 194, and we will get up there. So thank you, Chief. Um, and I know it was with great reluctance that you accepted this, but you understood that we needed to do this, and we are going to be increasing our officers for the coming year. So I'm very pleased about that. Yes, Alder Lefebvre. On you have, um, let's see, where is it here? Expand the, the CSI program to the police cadet program. Is this just, are we adding any uh, additional students to this? You know, we have five CSIs, and I think we find that that's a, a great program for us. It allows us to take a look at someone to see if they're suitable for our employment as a police officer with the city of Green Bay. Uh, they work for a fairly low wage, and they do a lot of those tasks that, uh, you know, are not going to get done picking up stolen bicycles and handling some animal calls and things of that nature. So I would love to increase the number of CSIs that we were able to get. Can you turn her I'm just saying we used to have 13... Uh, a couple of years ago, I think it was, and then it went down. So I'm, d I'm just, no, I just want to know, um, in this budget, you're not, you got the five, and that's all, right? You're not five officers. Season. Right now. Five. Or five seasons. Right, we have five season new season. officers halfway through the year, so really it's two and a half officers. And just to be clear, there are two records position uh, that are going unfilled this next year, two records off uh, clerks that are going unfilled, so we're going from nine to seven. And we've eliminated two desk clerk positions from the front desk, so we don't have desk coverage on weekends. But again, those are cost savings measure, cost saving measures. We used to have the CSIs funded through uh, community block grants, and correct me if that's wrong, but uh, that was basically eliminated, so these are all coming out of our budget now. I, I think the CSIs are very important too. It really helps your department. Um, I would like to see it increase, but we can't right now. Okay, thank you. Yes, Alder Galvin. Chief, uh, how many calls for service are there approximately a year? Ballpark 80,000. 80,000. So that's over 200 and 
five calls a day. Okay, well over. All right. Well, I was, I was figuring on 75,000. That's the last time I was given. How many times a day when officers start a shift are there calls in what we call a, a queue or waiting to be uh, dispatched out? You know, virtually every day. The only time it really slows down is uh, occasionally during the summer, or correction, during the winter. But I check with our watch commanders across the different watches, and generally there's basically between 5 and 15 calls in the queue uh, just about any time, especially in the evening hours. Now, um, that spikes dramatically if there's a call that requires a number of officers to be in one particular position or one spot for a period of time. Uh, last time I was in, there were 20 calls in the queue when the shift changed from afternoons to, or from day watch to afternoons, there were 20 calls holding in the queue. And again, you know our priority is to get to those 911 calls as quick as we can because that's really our, our highest priority. So when a call's in waiting, that uh, means when the officers get on the road and the shift consists of roughly 12 to 16 officers, depending upon the time of day. Yes, sir. So the entire shift is going to be used up trying to answer those calls. Correct. Get out there and log on as quickly as they can and start handling those calls and getting to them as quickly as they can so they can knock that number down right away. And at times, if it gets too, too great of a call wait, uh, we pull community police officers. Police officers or anybody else I can handle a radio call sometimes and you see on the weekly summary that I send you uh, we keep track of that and we figure out how much it costs sometimes we have to call the oncoming shift in early just to handle call volume so if it's nine o'clock in the evening and the shift isn't supposed to come on until 10 15 and the call volume is just uh, uh, way beyond what our officers can handle we'll occasionally have to call additional officers in or conversely keep additional officers late and have them work late so they can clean up those calls so that they're, they're not these calls waiting for a long period of time. And our staffing is set at 194, but uh, was it ever 194 since you started there? You know what? I checked on that, sir. And the uh, last time we were at, uh, we were authorized 193 in, um, in 2015. And for two days in 2015, we were at 193. Uh, and then we had a retirement, we were back down to 192 and it's dropped off. Since I've been here, we fluctuated between about 185, 188 to 191, 192. And it's kind of a moving target because we have so many retirements in these past few years that we'll hire four people and three weeks later we'll lose three to retirements. We'll hire five, we'll lose six to retirement. So it's been a moving target since I've been here. We've hired 45 new officers since I've been here out of 100 and, uh, well, 178 as of today. Out of the 100, and, okay, we're, we're funding 180 positions. We're not really funding 180 positions because we're already figuring that there's going to be retirements, so there'll be some savings there. So we're not even really funding 180, but out of 180, how many positions are not paid for by city? Well, right now we have two positions that are vacant. We hired a young fella on Monday, so we have 178 as we speak today. But he can't go on the road. He can't work. Right? in training uh, you know he won't even be out in the field except as a ride along with additional officers until probably after the first of the year um, but other agent or other people pay for our police officers for example um, the school resource officers are paid entirely by the school district's budget that's 11 full-time officers including fringe that's paid for by the school district so that's 11 so you take 178 minus 11 is 167 by my uh, public school math and then we have two officers that are paid for by the drug task force including their fringe and their overtime so uh, one then we have a uh, one and a half or one and a quarter officers are paid for by a grant that we have for community policing so that brings my calculations a total down to about 164 that the city pays for so 194 the city's only paying for 164 okay uh, my parochial education math is about equal with yours. So, um, so, and yet the police department is asked to give up another 14 officers, two clerical positions, and two front desk people, and we're getting five back in the middle of the year. And I, I'm 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 having a hard time when I've got people calling me up telling me they're waiting a half hour, 45 minutes, an hour for an officer to respond to their home for a call. I've got people during the Fourth of July who never get an officer to come to their house for fireworks complaints. And I, and, and I realize the police department takes a huge chunk of this budget, but the main three things we're supposed to be providing our community is fire, police, and garbage. And, and I'm, I'm hoping that between now and next week, we can take another look at this and find some more resources to at least get those officers, those five officers starting January 1st, 
and not the middle of the summer. Because by the time they're trained, like the chief is saying, they're not even on the road till just about Christmas time. And then we're going through this process all over again the next year. I mean, for us to tell people who are looking to move to the city that we had 194 officers, and in reality, we don't even have 180. And I've got complaints about speeding. I've got complaints about people in the neighborhoods. I see things on social media. And I'll tell you, I, I don't get complaints about the parks. I get complaints about DPW when it comes to snow time, Steve, so get ready. Um, but I don't get complaints about garbage pickup or anything else. I don't get complaints about fire response or anything else like that. The complaint I get all the time is about the lack of police resources. And I think as a community, we really have to make a commitment to try and find the money and the resources to get it up there to where it needs to be. We've got a, um, uh, I, I just don't think it's right to tell people the police department is out there when they're, they're not out there because they're too busy. They're too committed to doing other things and they're not, they're, they're a, a reactive department. A proactive department is one that has the time to go out and look for things that are going on, to answer complaints. I've got neighbors complaining about speeding and I tell them, well, I'm telling the traffic department, they'll be out there. There's two guys in traffic enforcement, two guys, and they work the day shift and they've got the entire city to cover. Community police officers help. We had 16, we're down to 11 now. And we're gonna be losing a couple more to retirement. And they're spread all over the city. So what do I tell people going forward? There's gonna be no one there. I mean, you got, a, you got a problem with your kid walking down the street, you're afraid they're gonna get hit by the speeders that are continuous going up and down the street. Why do you think we get complaints all the time in the traffic bicycle ped uh, thing about putting stop signs at every intersection because of the speeding and, and the, the aggressive driving that we're seeing more and more in our society. And I'm, I'm gonna ask the mayor's office again, between now and next week, if you can find some more money somewhere, I, I think it's gonna do us a lot of good. And I see you shaking your head and, and I understand. I mean, you inherited this. And, and, and so I'm, I'm, not, I'm not, again, and, and I'm the one that voted for some of the past budgets. So the, the blame rides here too. But we've got to start getting smarter about budgeting, long-term budgeting, not using one-time resources, but we've, uh, and I know we're working on TIFs and TIDs and everything else, but uh, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna ask you again, see where you can crunch some numbers and maybe get some more money towards the police department. Alder Galvin, I appreciate your passion. Let me just ask a question to the chief. Chief, even if we wanted to, would there be a recruit class that could possibly be ready by January 1st? Ma'am, right now we have uh, six officers in the pipeline. That means they've passed just about everything and we're hoping to hire them by uh, in the middle of December. We should have a total of, well, six now since we've just hired one. Um, that would bring us with retirements to start the year at 100, 181. So we would start January 1st with the uh, 181 officers. I, I couldn't scramble and find some more qualified candidates before January 1. Um, we can certainly, we have a, another class graduating from TC in uh, May, and there's probably 20, 20 young candidates that we're looking in that class at. That so that's why we're looking at May. I mean, I don't think we ever scramble when we hire police candidates. We, we go through a very, having been on the Police and Fire Commission, a very, very rigorous hiring process that takes a very long time to get the quality candidates. So, um, and I'm not sure, Alder Galvin, I think we need to cut from other areas of the budget to find money. I, I don't know where money would come from, and yet I do appreciate your passion for this. Well, and, and I would have to say that last year we found money for two rescue squad personnel. So I'm, I'm, it's not impossible. Last year we had a budget, there were supposed to be cuts made, and yet we found money for two rescue squad personnel. I think it was one-time money, I think it was. But anyway, Alder Burnett, or Alder Van Der Lees first. Lease Go ahead. Thank you, Chairman. Chairwoman, uh, I've had very few complaints about the Green Bay Police Department in my district. I've had not had one call as far as explain the fire response time. I live next Talking to, to your I home. live next to Section 8 housing. I have 170 apartments that live right next to me. And I think the Green Bay Police Department is doing a fine job. And I know that uh, the recruitment problem is not just a local problem, it's a nationwide problem as far mm -hmm. as finding police officers that are qualified. So I think that you know the chief is handling the situation and uh, uh, as far as complaints in my district, I've had none. And then that Thank goes you. for the police and fire. And, and I get a lot of calls, probably if you looked at the calls that come on the 9th 
in the words of Villa West housing and some of the housing projects that are in my district, uh, very few complaints. So uh, my, my, my hat is off to them that they're doing a good job. And as far as uh, I know the chief's working on getting new recruits and, and I think that uh, let, him, let him do his job. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alder. Mr. Burnett? Yes, thank you, Chair Dorf. Uh, a little, I'm in, the, in between uh, Alder Galvin and Alder Vanderlees. So my interaction with the police department has been nothing but positive, but I will say that I get quite a few complaints uh, on speeding. And the traffic officers and our police officers are stretched rather thin in that area, and the whole broken glass theory, you ignore things, the smaller things they tend to accumulate. So I do think that we have a need to increase police officers even more. And I, when we were discuss, when you were each discussing the budget um, for the different departments out of respect to you, because I'm not a member of that committee and your committee, and I didn't want to try to sway your votes because I respect you as colleagues, but I'm not all too convinced that the position that is being filled in the human resource department, that that's a critical need. I believe that the police department is a critical need. And so what I would encourage you at this point, out of respect for you and your individual ability to make decisions, I, I would recommend that that position not be filled this year, um, not because I don't think that diversity and inclusion is important, but I think that there are other ways to uh, appreciate diversity and encourage in, um, inclusiveness in our city employees and throughout the community. Uh, I'm not convinced that that position should take a higher precedence over uh, adding another police officer to our force. So do do that, do with that as you wish, but that would be my recommendation that that position is not as important to me and to the functioning of city government as much as an additional police officer. Thank, Thank you, you, Alder Burnett. Alder Skinnell. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but is that position not uh, levy neutral? There's no effect on the levy. We would not save any money to put any towards uh, police officers. Is that not correct? Um, it it is levy neutral to 2019 budget. There was 70,000 in last year's budget for this assistant for half year, this or for that position, and in this year we have $73,000 budgeted. Would it be a levy impact? I mean, if you pulled that position out, it would be a savings of $73,000 that could be redirected either to reduce your mill rate increase or it could be put towards some other expense. Okay, thank you. And uh, just to be a stinker. Yes, Alder Skinner. You know, this council has made decisions that has left hundreds of thousands of dollars out there and also put in some money into some lawsuits that we needed. So I would just ask our alders to uh, remember that going forward. Thank you. Any other comments? Yes, Alder Lefebvre. I wanted to mention about the, um, the police. Um, I, I requested in my district, and I live right across from the wildlife sanctuary entrance, um, to ha try to the speeding out there is really bad, and people are going past the wildlife sanctuary entrance with a sidewalk, people coming off from Bay Beach. And the the thing is, they're, they're so busy, they couldn't come out. So I had nobody, and then remember, we had an awful, awful accident there. And luckily, there weren't pedestrians that were hit. And I just, yeah, we do need more officers. We need more of the CSIs to help the officers to do the smaller things. And um, I, I believe uh, with Alder Galvin saying that we really need to build up our police department. We need to be, like you said, proactive. And if we can cut something, um, I thought maybe because uh, moving around in the human uh, resources that um, the diversity and inclusion coordinator would be okay. But maybe we do have to look at that. And right now we need we need police officers. We need to help our police department. Thank you. Alder Stoyer. Thank you, Chair. Um, Chief, I'll, I'll talk to you a little bit about this. I talked to Commander Warwick not too long back, and, um, and we were talking about you know, some of the neighborhood associations and some citizens that are talking about that we need more traffic officers. And his comment was that we're, uh, if we get four or five more officers, that they would be just going into the general um, 
the general police department as far as working on calls and such. So I don't I don't even know if you can, if the if the need is there for tra more traffic, you know, try to handle that particular problem. If if that's something that you would consider, or is this something that where you would get five officers that they would just be incorporated into the entire department? We have to look at is uh, our uh, community policing officers in District Adam, which is on the far west side. We have one officer left, Ron Shade, and he's the only community policing officer out there. Um, we certainly couldn't leave that quarter of the city without a community policing officer or two. So I'd like to add uh, a community policing officer out there. Right now, I'd like to add a, an additional, a third full-time traffic officer. Um, we have one or two officers that really have a talent for, uh, you know, finding uh, those speeders and those people that are doing those violations in school zones and um, are very um, very busy doing that in their own time, I'd love to be able to turn one of those into a full-time traffic officer. So um, that's kind of where I'd like to see we, us put those five officers, at least one or two in the community policing, um, some answering radio calls, of course, and I'd love to be able to squeeze another traffic officer out so we could keep, uh, keep a lid on some of those speeders, especially around schools. Police department's been very good as, as far as you know when I've put in requests for speeding and that in my district. You know they've been very good about that. So I don't have a problem with that. But there are many citizens that I'll sit with in their driveway and we'll just estimate the cars that are going by. And a lot of times stop signs don't matter. So that's a cultural thing. I don't know what we can do about that. But I think that it's something that we just need to be more respectful as citizens as well on that. But. I'm, I'm in favor of, uh, you know, adding some officers. I think it's very important, as Alder Galvin said. You know, he experienced it for many years, so I, I defer to him a lot on some of these issues. So I think it's very important. Thank you. Alder Burnett. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair Dorf. Uh, question for the police chief. I represent the area that you uh, mentioned, Officer Shaden is the community police officer. Um, obviously so it's a very important issue to me and your comment about it's possible that we not have a community police officer out there that's extremely troubling to me is that a true statement that we wouldn't transfer or put some officer out there so that uh, that area is covered by community police well, I think it'd be important for us to have at least somebody over there so um, assume we don't get any more people that we can put in community policing, we'd have to shift someone from one of the other alders areas over to that area so we at least have somebody out there that can handle those problems. Look, it's a false economy. If we think we can have um, houses that are problematic continue for month after month after month, drug houses that are going to continue to cause problems month after month, because sooner or later, a house that's a hangout for kids or a house that's abandoned that's not taken care of becomes a place where somebody has an accident or gets shot or something terrible happens. We've seen it time and time again. So it's a false economy to think, well, we can let those places go for a while while we, uh, while we recover and whatnot. I think we need to pay attention to all those, making sure the landlords get the training that they need, uh, making sure that we do the abatements on those houses that are problematic because um, if we don't, then they become not problems, not just for the neighborhood, but criminal problems and attract the criminal element as well. Yes, so, Alder uh, Chief, one thing I've greatly respect you for and appreciate uh, of you and your service to the city is that you come from a very uh, largely populated area. Uh, LA is quite a bit different than Green Bay and obviously for a lot of reasons, but you have really made a focus of your department to build community. Uh, I see your officers all, all the time. I see you on social media. You yourself engage with the public. I understand you don't know what a cheese curd is from the social media <laughs> posts that I've, I've seen. Well, the reason I state that is that uh, I, I understand the need for diversity and inclusivity, being inclusive in community, but I think that your your department does that. I know it's not necessarily you know, part of the human resource budget, but can you speak a little bit to how your department uh, you know, appreciates and respects those of diverse backgrounds and how we could perhaps get you the officers you need and still accomplish the initiative of diversity and inclusion? 
Sure. We, um, you know, uh, we obviously pride ourselves on being a very open and welcoming department. We have 28 female police officers right now, which is way above the national average, way above the local average uh, in terms of percentage of personnel. Um, when I first got here, I told my recruiters that I'm prepared to scour the earth to get the right candidates. And we've got, we have the only, I think probably in the state, the only Jamaican American police officer uh, working in Green Bay. Um, we have, uh, uh, several Native American officers. Um, we're about to hire our first female Hispanic officer, which I think is interesting, um, not because she's a female or because she's Hispanic, but because she's the best qualified person for the spot. And that's the other thing. I, I don't want to lose sight on it. We are we embrace diversity. We think it's important for us as a department to match the community that we serve, but we're not willing to compromise and hire people that don't meet the high standard of the Green Bay Police Department. So every person that you see, regardless of ethnicity or regardless of gender or whatever, is someone that meets that high standard. And I'd rather go with vacant positions than drop that standard to get someone to, to fill a slot that we need. So um, our recruiters are, are uh, go across the state and even outside of the state lines. We recently got an officer from Texas. Um, I'd love to go anywhere it takes us to find a you know good quality uh, recruit for the police department. Thank you. Um, Chief, do you see any benefit for the city um, as far as to find candidates, to help find candidates for the police department to have a diversity and inclusion coordinator. Would this position benefit you or fire or any of the other many departments that we have? Well, any help that we can get to um, improve the diversity of our department is great. Oftentimes you go to those academy classes and here, especially here in Wisconsin, it's almost all male and it's almost all white. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it sure is nice when we can find a candidate that's got a different background, a different experience. We've got a huge uh, Hispanic community in Green Bay. And just yesterday at Night Watch Roll Call, I was there and they said, hey, Arturo, who's our only Spanish speaker on the watch, is overwhelmed with Spanish speaker requests. He's going from call to call to help out other officers who don't speak Spanish. And one of the officers raised their hand and said, when are we going to hire some more Hispanic or Spanish speaking officers so that they can assist Arturo with his um, Spanish speaking calls. Um, well, we have one in the pipeline that we're hopefully going to have uh, sworn in in December. But geez, if we can uh, reach out to the Hispanic community somehow and reach those highly qualified candidates that we don't have that are maybe um, native Spanish speakers, I think that would be a, a terrific asset for us. And they say there's 15,000 um, people of Hispanic descent living in Green Bay. And uh, we have a handful of uh, Hispanic officers and, and, and that's the only handful that really speak Spanish. So for us to serve that community and to uh, include them in everything, it's, it's really great. And if we can have somebody that can help assist us with that, you know, the, all the more better. Director um, Faults, do you see that that diversity and inclusion coordinator would have, would be able to assist um, the other departments? Is that the purpose that throughout the city to is it to include a diverse population that we would hire? Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, that's the purpose of the position is to help recruit all the departments, um, not just City Hall, but police and fire, but to help uh, recruit people of diverse backgrounds to help with public safety or any other department that we have. Thank you. And I know we're wandering a little off topic because we're not on that right now, but I would just say I would be very opposed to taking that funding away. We've already finished that portion of the budget. We did approve that, but I, I do think that that's important. And if we need to look for money, then let's look somewhere that's not going to be a position that is really going to make this community feel like a more inclusive um, community that is going to make this city hall and the employees that we have be representative of the people within our community. And I think that position is of vital importance. So that would be my two cents on that position. All right, anything else on the police department? I will move to approve the police department equipment replacement portion of the budget. Okay, seconded by Alder Galvin. I move that one. So, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, motion carries. Fire equipment and replacement, page 90.
Any question on the fire department budget? I'll entertain a motion to, yes, oh, I'm sorry, Alder Stoyer. Uh, Chief, I was just gonna ask on um, 51399, there's, there's been a drop in pension by 60.8%. Is that partly with retirements? Or can you explain that? 51399 on page 92. Retired firefighter spouse who has uh, passed away in a pre in previous year, so those benefits will no longer be carried forward. That's what I'm <coughs> uh, I you got a couple here too, or a little on the bottom of the page. Training and travel, you got 83.9 percent. I know it's not a huge amount, but obviously you need to have your folks trained and such. Do you have what is the uh, the status on that kind of? Thing during the course of the year? Do you send a lot of folks out for training or, or what, what is the status of that? Well, the, the, uh, that basically takes us back to the 2018 level. Uh, last year, obviously, we had a, a massive cut across the board in all departments. It's returned us to the uh, level that we had in 2018. We train 195 uh, personnel on the street. Um, while we do have an internal training division, uh, there are many areas of expertise that we have to you know, send people out for additional training and or conferences to bring back to train the rest of the department so um, that again is just returning us back to the 2018 and previous years levels uh, on page 93 in the bottom you have firefighting equipment we may have touched on this already I'm not sure but 93.6 percent increase and I suppose just just explain that a little bit if you, if you look across uh, so the 2018 actuals, 39,400, that's the level that it's been uh, basically at within the general operating budget. Uh, money that was moved out of there last year was put into bonding. And so we were returning it back into the general operations fund. Okay. Any other questions for fire? All right, I'll entertain a motion to improve, to approve the fire portion of the budget. Motion approved by Alder Calvin, second by Alder Lefebvre. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Public works on page 97 includes engineering, operations, traffic, and equipment replacement. Page 97. I'd like to welcome um, Alder Stevens and thank him as I thanked all the other Alders. Um, he was able to get off of work a little bit early so he could join us. So thank you, Alder Stevens, for joining us. Any, yes, oh, oh okay, Alder Galvin. Um, Director Grenier, uh, as the mayor said, we're taking some money from the wheel tax money and we're gonna direct that towards road maintenance. Uh, my understanding is, and correct me if I'm wrong, we took in approximately $1.3 million in wheel tax. Oh, well, 1.4 as of today. Okay, and that money is designated for this upcoming year's budget, correct? Matter of fact, uh, about $900,000 of that money is allocated towards uh, 2019 construction projects right. to offset what otherwise would have been levied as pavement special assessments. Additionally, another $100,000 was allocated uh, to supplement what was in the budget already for 2019 for those very same road maintenance accounts. So there are designated uses, uh, plus there was an additional couple hundred thousand dollars that was specifically earmarked to pay for uh, the resurfacing of Haven Place that was accomplished by the Improvement Service Committee and approved by the Common Council. So we don't have anything left or point two maybe? We, have, we, we haven't done a cost accounting on where we sit on there right now. I know that when it was last requested in August, we did bring forward uh, what, the, what the revenues and expenses were uh, year to date for 2019, and we were running in arrears at that point, but I think we have come out of that situation now. Okay. 
So when, when we're taking the wheel tax money, from what date to what date goes towards the coming year's budget? Uh, in general terms, it in general terms it follows our budget. So the wheel tax money received in nineteen is intended to be spent in nineteen, okay. but anything that remains uh, unspent at the end of the year automatically rolls in. It's in a segregated account that it can only be used for transportation purposes. All right. So, as you recall, the the wheel tax was a very contentious issue, and there was a lot of negotiating that went on as to how that money was going to be used. Um, the understanding being that the majority of that money would be used for replacing road surface, correct? Uh, no. What, what was approved was actually the sources and uses identified in the July 2017 memo that I provided to the council. Right, and if I understood so, that correctly, it was railroad crossing, bridges. Um, the, primary the primary use of that money was, again, to eliminate residentially zoned properties, special assessments for pavements, and to reduce by 50% other than residentially zoned property special assessments. Above and beyond that, we had listed a number of different uses, including rail crossing repairs, uh, supplementing um, the pavement uh, maintenance accounts, so that would be blacktop and joint ceiling, uh, and to expand the program. My concern here moving forward is that I'm getting the feeling that we're going to start down a slippery slope where we're taking this money now to offset road maintenance costs. My concern is that we would reduce the amount of roads that we're replacing because we're not going to have that money there because it's being used for other things. I, I, I don't know what you're looking for from me. Well, what I'm looking for from you is that Next year, are we going to take more money from wheel tax to do road maintenance instead of offsetting what would have been paid for? I mean, are, are we going to be reducing the amount of roads? The idea was that it would make it easier to get more roads replaced because of the wheel tax, because we wouldn't have citizens fighting having their roads replaced because they had to pay the special assessment. And my concern is, is that to offset some of our shortfalls, we're taking wheel tax money to offset those shortfalls, thus reducing the amount of roads that we're replacing. My budget request. Two hundred thirty-one thousand. The two hundred and thirty-one thousand in the budget I submitted was in the operating budget. Right, but we're using wheel tax money for that, correct? Okay. And I, I'm not pointing fingers like you asked for it or the mayor asked for it. My concern is, are we going to start potentially reducing the amount of roads that we're replacing? That is not my intention whatsoever. My intention is to use the wheel tax money as I identified to you. So you have already roads designated for replacement next year? We have a draft program that has not been brought forward for ratification at the committee level, but yes, we have a program. Okay, but it's not being reduced because of this? Absolutely not. Our intent is to expand wherever possible. However, we need to realize that there are limitations, and we've tried to explain that multiple times. If the, and this is a discussion for another day, but we're also limited in how much road work we can do by the amount of available funding that the sewer utilities, both Sanitary and Storm, and the Green Bay Water Utility have available. Because otherwise what we're going to wind up doing is we're going to put brand new roads on top of aging underground infrastructure that could fail at any time. And from a personal perspective, and I've talked to uh, the general manager at the water utility, uh, that's just not a good engineering approach. But if, if that's something in, in the future that the council wants to explore, that, that's something that you guys obviously have the latitude to do. So we can expand that program, but only to a certain extent. We're eventually, and we're pretty close to it right now, we're going to run up against funding limitations, not only the ones that we have, because again, this is going to be part of a larger discussion. And we've talked about this at Finance Committee in the past where bond council is recommending that we only have a certain amount of bonding we can do. That includes not only levy supported borrowing, but they're also talking about other support. So, you know, the stormwater utility, and when we get to that portion of the budget and the sanitary utility and, and, and the parking utility, those are all self-sufficient. They have debt service that they need to be aware of as well. So there's only so much that each of those utilities can bond as well as the water utility 
And that may be the limiting factor on how many roads we can do because there's not a whole lot of roads out there that don't have utilities with utility infrastructure needs underneath them as well. All right. I appreciate that explanation. That's what I was looking for uh, because I'm getting questions, obviously, every time someone gets their registration thing, I'm getting a phone call or a hot email. And I'm having to re-explain everything to them. And then they've already seen now where some wheel tax, as soon as they see wheel tax money, they fire up. And they see money's being what they think being used for road maintenance and not for road replacement. And so I appreciate your explanation on the limitations, not only of our budget, but also other departments' budgets. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Alder Stryer? No. Well, I just wanted to uh, echo what Alder Galvin said. I appreciate that uh, insight, Director Grenier, on that because, you know, I think a lot of times we're looking at a road. You know, we look at the road for what it is, but there are other factors that are included. So I guess in the future for us, it would be nice to have a handle, whether it's communication or something out there so that when roads are being done, that we understand, okay, it's not just a repaving, but there's also some infrastructure development as well. And I don't know what that would take to just have that information shared, but I think that would be very good for all of us. Okay, um, any, any other questions on this budget then? Yes, Alder Burnett. Yes, thank you, Chair Dorf. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of danger in you know, pulling or allocating money from the wheel tax fund for things that, uh, as an individual council member, I don't speak for anyone else, when I approved the wheel tax or voted in approval of the wheel tax, it was my understanding that it would, would remove uh, special assessments on residential properties and I know that's the case I know that's what's happening but mm -hmm. also the the further part of that wheel tax discussion was that we would then do more roads than we otherwise had been scheduled to do and I know director Grenier answered that question uh, when he spoke but prior to me getting back on the council this time I followed the wheel tax discussion and the public at that time and alders who I spoke to they were afraid that the wheel tax would be just another revenue for the public works department to do work that they otherwise should levy to to do that work and that was from my understanding one of the reasons why it was voted down or didn't pass through committee the number of times that it was attempted so I don't want this to be yet another revenue source for public works and if director Grenier said that that was not part of his original budget proposal then I don't know if it was the mayor's office who directed that those funds from the wheel tax be allocated for joint sealant and blacktop or whatever the the wording is is can you verify that Alder Dorf I don't know if the well, mayor I, can answer that directly. well I believe that during my discussion I don't know if you had a discussion about what the mayor about the budget I did yeah and that was that that had come up I mean we we're looking for ways to balance this budget and um, we we looked at the mill out ah, mayor Genrick yes if you'll recall Alder that is the discussion that we had when we met which is that um, in, in order to meet the request of director Grenier which is to significantly increase both blacktop and joint ceiling um, in the neighborhood of uh, well I think it's 231,000 ultimately between the two accounts um, you know we didn't have that capacity in the general fund and since we do have wheel tax revenue that is the purpose um, for which it's been created both maintenance reconstruction right. elimination of assessments um, felt like that was an appropriate revenue source but we did have that discussion the the two of us I believe that's correct mayor I, I do recall the discussion but you know, when you, you meet, you kind of review the budget after the fact, and that's one thing that stuck out uh, a after I studied it a little more. So uh, I just, I, I don't want this to, things that should go to levy should go to levy. Things that we voted for as a council to go for, you know, the removal of special assessments on residential property, reduction in half of business re uh, assessments, it just seems like, this uh, road repair should go to the levy and the wheel tax revenue that we voted for should go towards doing more roads as we're able to um, without levying special assessments. So that uh, when this goes before the full council, I, I'm gonna, gonna dig a little deeper and trying to understand how we can restore the wheel tax money for what I intended that wheel tax money to be for when I made that vote, because it was a difficult vote. 
as it was for many of you. So, my understanding is that the wheel tax money is being used for just the purpose that it was intended to resurface and, and to fix roads, and we don't have any any more money. And I think without that, we wouldn't wouldn't be able to do these additional roads. Is, isn't that correct, Director Grenier? Well, I, I want to be clear about a couple of things. Okay, I that this the way things are structured were not necessarily part of my original budget request of the mayor but the way that the mayor has done it i fully support there is no other way to pay for this stuff okay uh when we talk about the wheel tax i would strongly encourage you to go back and take a look at the the video right. from that meeting there were a number of alternatives a number of amendments that were ultimately introduced none of which passed right. what was passed was to utilize the wheel tax money consistent with the provisions of the memo that had been prepared by the Department of Public Works. That memo very clearly indicated what potential sources and uses were out there. And road maintenance was one of them. The mayor is acting in accordance with what the provisions of the memo were, which is ultimately what the Common Council adopted. Which is what we want is more road maintenance. We want the roads to be resurfaced. Alder so Vanderlust. we we are 100 percent in support of of what the mayor is proposing in the budget here because it is consistent with the direction we receive from the common council. Alder Vanderlust. Thank you. Uh, I feel that uh, what Director Grenier is talking about there is that people that are having their their uh, surfacing redone they are getting the they are getting the uh, money. In other words, paid. In other words, they're not shorting anybody on that end of the money. Right. In other words, if, if they say they're going to do Ninth Street in a certain section, the people that are going to get the resurfaced, they're going to they're receive what they. And, and as far as you know, doing the cracks in the ceiling, that's probably one of the most important things. You know, if you got a big piece of concrete and the water's running, the thing's going to heave up a mile. So in yeah. other words, whatever they can uh, seal, in uh, you know, it's going to help the overall driving for anybody that's on the road you know mo most of the stuff that's been let go so if we're getting more money into that part of it that's that's all part of it in other words that's what we're looking for thank you thank you um alder lefebvre i think i can attest for the uh some of these roads um that need to be sealed or also uh, all these potholes i should say uh, i probably I probably reported 500 or more, probably a lot more than that. I mean, everywhere I go, I've been seeing potholes all over. And if we don't fill those potholes, the road's going to deteriorate even more. So I think this is part of it too, the ceiling and the, you know, the, the patching and all that. This is part of what we need to do to maintain the road until we can get to them to replace them. Alder Burnett. That's kind of feeling. Correct me if I'm wrong, but we didn't pass the wheel tax so we could patch potholes. I mean, that was part of it. That was part, part of, it. of it. But also, yeah. the, if you remember, it was the tipping point. It was the special assessments along Hillcrest. Folks in the $40,000 range, someone 59000 I think that might have included water. I don't recall. But that was the reason why the wheel tax passed, so that we could reconstruct and construct roads that otherwise were deteriorated. We don't, you know, put a fee on $20 per vehicle so we can patch potholes. Like that is not a good use of that revenue source. It's to re remove the special assessments that otherwise would create a huge financial hardship for the families and the people we represent. So if we're gonna start shifting 200,000 this year, however much it is, and then 200,000 next year and 300, on and on we go. It's just yet another revenue source that goes for patching potholes. That should come out of general levy dollars, not an additional revenue source. I will look at the minutes of that meeting and I will look at that memo. We did approve something, but I, I don't think, I, I, I don't think it was presented exactly that way. My understanding was that we would do more roads and eliminate the special assessments because it was the residential opposition that was requiring us to keep voting down projects. When people are given the choice of paying a special assessment right. to the residential property or just go along with the road even though it's horrible, they, they were opting to go along with the road because 
they didn't want to pay that assessment. I did not vote to pass the wheel tax so that potholes could be patched. Now, if there's a big picture item that we're looking, some capital improvement plan, maybe we're looking at a long-term solution to fix roads, if that's why we're doing it for this year, then I at least would want a little more insight on what types of roads, the number of roads, what roads are on that project list for this year. Director Grenier, if I could chair, Director Grenier, do you have a list of the roads that will be done uh, in 2020? Well, maybe there should be a, more of a discussion for improvement in services. I don't know. It could be, but it, the it reason I, this has come up in, in uh, improvement in services, but I, at least I would want to know uh, what roads, a handful of roads that are going to be included. So I don't think, I think he, you indicated you don't have that right this minute because I think someone had asked that. I just don't want to say that right. there is in no way are people, are we talking about ever not paying special assessments? That's the number one reason that we have that. And then the number two reason is to continue to fix the roads that, that need fixing. And that's what I see us doing with the funds. Am I wrong, wrong about that, Director Grenier? You're exactly right. Okay. All right. I'm Alder Scannell. Uh, the, the, the main concern that I remember having that, that this money would just become a slush fund that we would throw yes. to any other department or anything else yeah. like that. It, we made very clear this is four roads, right. alleys, bridges, anything that a wheel goes on is what these right. funds are for. Primarily, the biggest point was for reconstructions and resurfacings to eliminate special assessments. But after that, it was anything that would uh, help a wheel go over the road much better, right. that was appropriate funding. I mean, we're not right. taking these funds and we're not shifting it to uh, uh, any other department or anything else, which was what I often heard from people who were concerned about, you know, this is going to be a slush fund and you can do whatever you want with it. No, it's strictly for wherever a wheel goes. And that's what we're using it for. Wherever our wheel goes, first, there's no one here in our budget going to be getting hit with a special assessment. I mean, we've taken care of that. Now, uh, I mean, we have our infrastructure needs are great, and we're going to be limping along, but let's at least make things as habitable as we can. And once we've done with the roads, reconstructions, and resurfacing, let's, let's fill those potholes as best we can. So uh, I think we're, we're doing exactly what we voted for, exactly what we're doing. We're not, this isn't a slush fund for anything mm -hmm. else. It's strictly for roads, bridges, alleys. Let's not forget those. Those are also, uh, if there's any need, we shouldn't be raising uh, uh, any red flags over that. That's just as uh, uh, Director Garnier, if he sees a need, he needs to do it. So thank you. All right, any other questions on this portion? I'll entertain a motion to approve the public works portion of the budget. So moved by Alder Lefebvre. Second. Second by Alder Dorf. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Uh, Parks, Rec, and Forestry on page 117. Yes. Okay, another reclassification. Who'd like to speak to that? Director Faltz? Yeah, we have okay. a reclassification of a park superintendent to the assistant parks director. Our uh, park superintendent um, has been receiving a stipend for the work he's been doing for out of class work, uh, for overseeing the wildlife sanctuary and, and a, lot of, a lot of other responsibilities. So um, based on the job he's doing right now, we did create a um, job description to create an assistant parks director. And um, the, the job description is included. With the fiscal impact, um, if you look at, it, it shows right now about 3,800 uh, increase for, for next year. But in reality, we, we didn't account for the stipend. So the stipend is about 3,300 a year. So really, we're looking at maybe about a $500 increase um, based on the new uh, classification. Okay, $500 increase, good. He's doing a great job. So, any questions on the parks budget? Alder Banjer least. What was the actual funds that Bay Beach took in this last year? Okay, I think we have Bay Beach a little further 
Don't we have that a little further on? Number 18? Okay. Um, it will get to that if you can. Yeah, we have Bay Beach. We're in number um, 12, and we'll get to Bay Beach um, in a little bit. Okay? Thank you. Alder Stroyer. So with this new, with this position now, is this um, is an, an internal move right now? Uh, Director yes. Ditchett? Yes, it would be an internal move. Uh, the recreation superintendent would be promoted to the uh, assistant director position. Okay. With those duties, what, what percentage would um, that person be dealing with? either at the wildlife sanctuary and or other duties. Is there some kind of a breakdown on something like that? I don't have a breakdown of the percentages, but I can give you a, a description of what is of what's changing. So initially with that position of recreation superintendent, they just oversaw the programming needs uh, for the recreation division and that was it. Over the last several years, uh, that position has been evolving uh, to do uh, recreation programming for all of the divisions within the department, including Wildlife Sanctuary, Bay Beach, and even a little bit with forestry and, and the parks. Uh, and the position will expand even further to get into additional marketing and public outreach um, directives uh, for the department as a whole instead of just the recreation division. Uh, so in addition, uh, they will, this position will maintain uh, the 4K responsibilities as the site supervisor uh, running the 4K program. One more thing, uh, it just seems like there, there are a lot of duties that are be, will be brought to this position, some new, newer ones as well. And I'm just, in your estimation, <clears throat> do you feel like this will be handled well uh, by that position? Yes. I Yes, I do believe it'll, uh, it'll be handled well. So currently, a lot of those duties, uh, they've been doing that uh, because of the stipend. Uh, but some of the duties will be kind of funneled to the recreation superintendent positions. And then we're going to handle seasonal salaries slightly different uh, to kind of take up uh, the slack at the lower end. That's all for now. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions on this budget? Alder Burnett. Thank you, Chair. I'm not sure who would answer this question, but uh, there's a transfer of uh, $1,189,853 from Forest Street to the stormwater utility, or what I assume to be the water utility. Is that correct? That was, no, that's, no. We talked about that with Forest Street, but who wants to explain that? Director Grenier. That dollar value represents salaries and fringe benefits. Uh, well, actually, it's pretty much everything within the, the, the 670 uh, section of, of forestry. So forest, about 89%, give or take, I think, 88 or 89% of the total, value, uh, the total budget for forestry uh, is being covered by the stormwater utility in recognition of that about 89% of the trees owned by the city of Green Bay are in the terrace. Uh, and the contribution that those terrace trees do to holding sediment management in place uh, and managing stormwater that's falling on the ground. So that's more in line with what a few other municipalities have been doing. I apologize if I stepped out at the moment. I thought we were reviewing parks and forestry, and this had been uh, in the forestry de parks and forestry department. Is that correct? Like last year, this expense was in the... Yes. Right. So I might have stepped out when you were talking in public works. I guess my question, okay. though, could we, is there, this will then be, the expense will be transferred, though, to uh, another area, and that would affect, from my assumption, water rates or stormwater rates um, to, the, to the users? Yes. And we get water bills quarterly. Mm -hmm. Per parcel, is there any estimation, prediction of what our our consumers' quarterly water rate will increase per bill? I think Director Ellen Becker is looking that up for us. Storm, I, I understand. Storm I, I, yeah. I, I'm using incongruent terms, perhaps. It's under the stormwater item, which does, where does that appear on? Like four or five from now? Right. Number 16. Number 16. So 
we're going to get there, but it, it is kind of relevant right now. Um, do you it's, want it's a transfer from the parks and forestry from last year, so we can address it at that at, point. In a few I guess minutes. this is the reason yes. why I'm bringing this up now. If we don't know, if you don't know as a committee, or I don't know as an alder, what the effect uh, that that change will cause the quarterly bill of our consumers, our taxpayers, residents, then the reason I mention that now, maybe we ought not to make that transfer out of this, you know, parks and forestry, we add that back in. That's why I've stayed, but if you want to address it at a later part of the agenda, I'm fine with that. Um, what are the thoughts on skipping to, right, to storm source, so it's kind of, kind of flows, should we? We're, let's do that. Let's flow. Oh, I didn't mean. Yeah, it does flow. 150. Page. Let's flip over to page 150, please. And kind of keep keep your finger in this page. All right. So Alder Burnett is bringing up the point that that this money being transferred out of this budget will appear somewhere else, and therefore will cost money. By on and it will this this charge will be on the quarterly water bill is that correct? So the question is um, on an app and I, I I don't know if everybody's water bill I don't think is the same right or it is it does it depends on how much you use right? Mm -hmm. So is there a percentage um, that we know? Oh, oh yes, Director Grenier. The stormwater charges are based on equivalent runoff units, which is a measure of impervious area on the property. The more impervious area you have, the higher the charge is. So bigger properties get a bigger charge? Not necessarily. No. It's the amount of impervious area you have. Tell so me what that is. I don't... Concrete? concrete more or driveway, a rock or... More rocks. driveway, more charge more impervious, the water can't sink in. Okay. Larger lot, but all grass, not necessarily a larger charge. In okay. general, most residential lots are approximately one ERU. Okay. So, 2019, the rate is 9212 per ERU per year. If the budget is adopted as proposed, that rate for 2020 will go to $117.96 per ERU per year, which comes out to $25.84 on a quarterly basis that will increase your bill by $6.46. Oh, okay, so over each quarter, it's an additional $6? 6 okay. 626. 46. 46. 646, sorry. Okay, so that was your, that was a good question, Alder Burnett. So your question now that can be, so it's increasing that bill each quarter, $6.46. Okay, um, Alder Burnett. Well, I, since you moved this agenda item together, what I'll say is that $25 per year, I'm assuming that's a, Average some some more some less, but at least it gives us an idea. Now, if uh, if this committee decides to transfer that back to the forestry department, so your prerogative, of course, how much would we we would then have to cut the the budget somewhere one point two million dollars to break even? So basically, I remember this is former Mayor Smith had uh, transferred or he attempted to put leaf collection on the water bill. This was probably the first, prior to the first time I was on the city council. And, and for those of you who weren't on the council or following city government at that time, it was a pretty big uh, controversy, at least from my estimation. A lot of people were opposed to that. It's $25 on our water bill yearly for leaf, leaf pickup, which basically would be standard city services. So everyone has to vote their conscience and what their constituents would want them to do. But let's be honest, we are, t we are basically tacking on a $25 yearly charge on consumers' uh, storm water bill. So just be mindful of that. Uh, transfer might be a good idea. I mean, we're, a lot of the trees maybe do prevent flooding and do prevent water from going to stormwater retention areas and, and whatnot. But 
I can't support that. I think we need to find a way to trim the $1.2 million from the budget somehow, some way, and keep this the way that it has been through the years. So that's my personal opinion, and I'll just okay. stop talking about it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Let's, um, okay, we need to go back to uh, Parks and Rec and Forestry, back to page 117 in that area. Are there any other questions or comments on that? No? Motion to approve by Alder Galvin? I actually have a question. Oh, um, all right, Alder Corp Stex. Equipment repair going uh, increase of 868%. What is, what's that for? Okay. <clears throat> Um, if you look at the very la last line on page 127, in the previous years we've had a tra transfer out for um, to a special revenue fund of 319,000. Um, what you didn't see is what was that number, what that was being used for. So this year we changed it. We no longer have the transfer out to another fund to be spent out of. And what they did is they re they now put that number of, into the equipment repair line. They put it in the fuel and in the gas line. And then at that point, I could let the Department of um, the, the Parks Department talk more to details. But that was an accounting change we made, so it was a little more transparent on what they were spending the money for and keep it in, in the operating budget. Okay. Um, Director Ditchett. Oh, that's one the other line item that was in there was propane uh, line item. And uh, so it really just balanced out. It was more of an accounting thing, other than uh, just typical. Uh, year-to-date increases uh, planned for next year. You know, the fuel rates have gone up slightly along with some of the other ones. But for the most part, they're, they're just uh, equals out as journal entries. Okay. So it's really three that were off by step by if you look at line 54010, 54011, and then 55101, those three items, as you see in the past, there was no budget for them. And so now they've been added into the 2020 budget, but however, we no longer have this transfer out of 319,000. So it was just to maybe have it a little more clear on what that 319,000 was being used for repairs, gasoline, and, um, and propane. Okay. Good question. All right, we have a motion on the floor. Is there, and I, do we have a second? Second, second by Alder Corpus Dex. All those in favor, uh, say aye. Opposed, motion carries. All right. Miscellaneous, page 132. Any questions on the miscellaneous budget? Seeing none, I entertain a motion to approve. Motion to approve by Alder Galvin. Second. Second. Second by Alder Corpus Dax. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Sanitary sewer, yes, yes, Alder Sir. Uh, so far, unless I missed something, has anything been cut yet? There have been no changes to the budget. No changes at all. And I'm not saying that's good or bad, but I'm just saying that generally, but I've just, you know, in years past, a lot of times we would, I hate to use the word cherry pick, but we used to do that quite a bit. And I've talked to, uh, Director Ellen Becker and a few others saying that that's maybe not always the best process to go and do we really save that much by doing it. <clears throat> I will state that, <clears throat> you know, when I talked to the mayor and some of the department heads that generally they're, you know, there's a raise here, but they're generally pretty satisfied with the budget. But I think we still need to look at possibilities here. So I just needed to just hear that, that nothing has been changed. I'm not agreeing that it's always the best thing but you know so far it seems to be going pretty well but I, I just want to let folks know that we will be looking at this before council as well so thank you okay and and of course you're welcome to make any no, suggestions don't. and comments during this meeting okay all right were we on miscellaneous okay we approved it all right sanitary sewer page 142 Oh, general fund. Sorry, sorry. I'm, yes. Oh. 
departments rolled up by a count number in case you wanted to see that in, in a different view. It gives a different view. It's not really a It's section. not by department anymore. It's just rolled up by every account number. Okay. Right. So, because that's why it's not on my list here. It's really more informational, just did slicing and dicing in a different way. Is that something that we would like to to look at a little while? Or we've actually looked at it already. You may look at right, it. Um, there just would be no action item on it. On we would it. then redirect you back to the departments that make up that number. Okay. give you a few minutes to look at that. And there's no action on it, so um, we can move on to the parking utility. Oh, I'm sorry, Senator Sewer. I almost skipped it. Page 142. All right, Sanitary Sewer. I guess why has health and dental insurance go up, gone up so much in that particular department? Because overall, I felt like it didn't go up that much. Um, so the employer went up 4%. That was across the board. Okay. And then we also had dental go up 3%. Okay. Why you didn't see it in some of the departments is, well, one, we take out a million dollars worth of forestry employees. Um, you Got it. Overall, okay. the forestry's line health will look like it went down. We also actually had, okay. we also had some bridge tenders that are no longer in this budget. So overall, you have less employees. Um, so within that department, you're going to look, it looks like it maybe had gone down year over year. Okay. Um, but this and, is part, accounting for part of that. Um, correct. And then potentially money. if you have some switch where maybe you had some new hires or change in people taking either family plans or um, single plans, that you'll notice in a smaller department. But overall... Right. Um, that's um, within the departments. That's probably why you didn't notice it. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Any other um, questions then on sanitary sewer? I'll entertain a motion to approve this portion of the budget. Motion approved by Alder Galvin. Second. Second by Alder Corpus Dax. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Parking you. Utility, page 146. Any questions or comments on parking utility? I see our credit card fees have gone up, but that just makes sense because we, right, are now people can use their credit cards to pay for parking is that and then you always get charged for that so that makes sense anything else on that no all right I'll entertain a motion to approve the parking utility so moved by Alder um, Lefebvre second by Alder Dorf all those in favor aye, aye. opposed motion carries all right, back to storm sewer again. So let's really look at this. <sighs> sewer sediment went up quite a bit. Tell us about sewer sediment. I don't know why, but 83%. Are we needing to take more sediment out of sewers? Well, what, what we have there, uh, so 53040. Okay, so I was looking at 53102. Five, it's the very next line. You're very close. Okay. Uh, that is actually a payment that we are making to Green Bay Packaging. Um, that's part of the Green Bay Packaging overall uh, expansion project. They built a, they're building a sedimentation pond and they are no longer going to be discharging their non-contact water that was used for cooling at the plant. They're changing how their process works at the plant. Um, so they had 
a certain amount of allocation of sediment that they were allowed to discharge to the Fox River, we're purchasing that credit from them, and that helps with our MS4 permit. So it's, if you look in the industry, it's loosely referred to as pollutant trading uh, or reallocation of that sediment load. It's common practice, uh, as a matter of fact, with the sediment uh, that, w that we're talking about here, um, there were total suspended solids credit that we're purchasing, and then new water is purchasing the phosphorus credits associated with that as well. So what this does, essentially, we're buying somebody else's permit in lieu of having to build probably a $5 million pond. Purchasing pollution credits yeah. so we can continue to pollute and not build a treatment facility or a, a pond to collect that pollution. What we're doing is we're buying up somebody else's permit, what they had permitted. It's all permitted capacity. Where, where, where does this silt end up going? It, Fox River. So instead of building a retention pond to put that into it, we're just purchasing the ability to put it into the Fox River. Yeah. <laughs> Attorney Chavez. Sure. So the the way this the, the easiest way to understand this is the the either WDNR or EPA they allow a specific amount of pollutants to to exist within a, an area, and so you can either. Um, so they give you they give you a, spe a specified allotment, and then if you go above that, um, you either have to get somebody else to take their theirs out so that you can acquire their ability to um, meet that number, or you have to come up with an alternative. So the alternatives or the options we had essentially were build a pond ourselves to take our sediment out, and lost somebody else so that we maintain that number, and so it's not like we're continuing to pollute. These are these are are things that just happen it's you know it's silt it's and so they give us a number which protects the the um quality of the of the environment and so as long as we're staying within that number that's what's necessary under our permit where where was or what were we doing before we did this were we purchasing were we the permits work is they give you a specific amount of time and I don't know if we've already met that time period or if we're working on on meeting that time period um, director Grenier is much more familiar with it but they give you a specific time period to actually meet those numbers and they like I said they, they calculate them based on a regional approach and so they say here's how much we in reviewing all of this here's much how much can, this watershed can actually handle we were kind of under the gun to do come up with a solution Perspective. Again, there's a, th this is a very complex issue, but you know we'll break it down as much as we can. It's not just the permit doesn't cover the city, okay? It's broken down into individual drainage basins around major watersheds, and what we're dealing with in this particular case is what they refer to as the main stem of the Fox River. So once you get away from the Fox River by in a lot of cases, it's only a couple of blocks. Um, think about where the fox runs through Green Bay and what potential you have to put implement, uh, to implement best management practices to remove sediment in that proximity to the Fox River. There really isn't a whole lot. It's very, very developed, which is why we are the way we are about street sweeping. That's one of the few things that we do have at our disposal that we can do within that main stem. And actually, the main stem has some pretty uh, stringent requirements. They're actually much more um, stringent than in some of the outlying locations. So we have to remove more sediment the closer you get to the river with less opportunity. They're trying to buy up somebody's existing property that's developed to tear it down, take it off the tax roll, and then build a stormwater management pond it just doesn't seem to make a whole heck of a lot of sense. We were not as good off prior to this, this gives us the ability, we now have that capacity within our permit to help us achieve permit compliance without having to build a very costly facility. Does that make a little bit more sense? It, it does. Okay. Thank you. Yes, um, Alder Vanderleest. 
the Green Bay packaging, they are going to be more environmentally protective as far as their new, new facility. It's not going to be a coal-fired facility. It's going to be natural gas. And I think the water part of it will be much better as well as far as the emissions that they're going to be emitting. So they did bring that up at, at a meeting. So thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, entertain a motion on the storm sewer portion. Motion by Alder Galvin. Second. Second by Alder Corpus Dax. All those in favor? I oppose. Motion carries. Transit, page 155. Any questions on transit? Yeah, keep it. Yes, Alder Sawyer. Thank you, Chair. Um, Director Kiewitz, I just had a quick question. I, I saw something in the paper about raising of rates. Is that, I mean, that's reflected or not reflected in the budget? I just wanted a general comment about that. Yes, it is reflected in the budget. Alder Burnett. Yes, uh, thank, you. thank you, Chair Dorf. Now, uh, Patty, if Director, if it's in the budget and you have a public information session seeking public input, mm -hmm. is it kind of like a foregone conclusion that the rates are going to pass, and regardless of what the public comment is? The actual increases is determined. Um, the t decisions are made for that by the Green Bay Transit Commission. So there's a public hearing held in November. Decision, their actual decision will be in December. So depending, the budget is built with those increases. If the commission decides not to do those increases, then they will need to look at some service reductions. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions? I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve transit by Alder Galvin. Second by Alder, Corp, uh, Cor Alder Lefebvre, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And now we are on to Bay Beach, Alder Vanderleest. You had some questions about that. On the, it's on the very last page here, on, on uh, page 169, that uh, for 2018 and 19. So that answers my question there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any Anything else on, on the Bay Beach portion? Okay, I'll entertain a motion. Motion approved by Elder Galvin. Second by Elder Dorf. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Debt service, page 171. Any comments or questions on this? Okay, I'll entertain a motion to approve the debt service portion. Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Elder Corpus Dax. Second by Elder Dorf. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Neighborhood enhancement, page 174. Small budget. Yep. Motion, <laughs> Motion to approve by Elder Galvin. Second. Second by Elder Corpus Dax. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Workers' Compensation, page 178. Okay. On the book it says insurance, right? Mm hmm. Um, any questions on, yes, Alder Stoyer. Uh, Director Ellenbacher, I wonder if you could just explain this a little bit more as far as, just, just explain it, you know, this, these two pages. No, I think you're good. You know, just, just information, you know, of kind of where we're at with, with all of this. Sure, I can explain um, how the budget was pulled together. Um, what you're gonna see within the budget is, um, and this is built off um, actuals from our, um, our risk manager actually pulls the information together. 
Um, so within the budget, you're going to see three line items. We have contractual services, um, and that is pulled together from um, different uh, administrative services, TPA, um, additional um, services that we pay for to help um, administer our workers' comp. So you're seeing $181,000 um, as an expense. You are also seeing um, $130,000 for liability insurance. That's for premiums. And then the next last line item you're seeing is $1,046,000, and that is for expected claims in 2020. And that is bu built off a of four-year history of claims, and it's uh, separated by department. Um, so that is, um, again, that's based on four years' worth of history. Um, our risk manager pulls that together. I don't know if um, Director Falls has anything additional to add about the workers' comp. And maybe, maybe, it didn't seem like a big savings, but there was that $57,000 savings they were talking about. I don't know. That's probably not in this part right here. Something, remember? What, 50 cent for There what? was something with going from 2% to 1%, but that that's probably in a different area. Um, for general employees going um, um, in 2020 having a increase of a job, like cost of living increase from 2% and we have reduced it and recommended that it only goes to 1% in 2020 for the general employee that was a $57,000 savings because yeah, I didn't have anything to do with that would be straight part. that's straight salaries if you're thinking salaries yeah okay um, so then each one of these we need to do separately, I think. So, all right, so we're on workers' compensation first, right? All right, motion to approve workers' compensation. Someone. By Alder Corpus Dax, second by Alder Fave. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Um, general liability, page 177. I'll take a motion to approve that. It was just explained. It's 130,000. I'll move that. Anybody else want to second that? I'll second. Second by Elder Corpus Dex. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed. Opposed. Motion carries. And then the next item is page one. Well, actually, that's it for this. Page 180. Then we go to the health insurance escrow. Are we self funded? Is that what, what it is? 170. Well, why does it say 180? Hmm. Okay. The report that you have in front of you is a line item. Um, it is actually, we have budgeted $900,000 in both the 2019 budget and in the 2020. Um, 20 budget. Um, when we pulled this budget together, we had to consolidate the report so it didn't print on eight pages. We printed on one. It appears to be missing. We did budget $900,000. Okay. It's not in. It, you're, you're seeing, um, uh, I think the, um, Pam's verifying the information, but I, the report should show be showing $900,000. What page? I think there was just the way we printed this page. Okay, so um, which page? Are we talking about like page? I'm sorry, page 180. Is 180? Where we're looking at it. 180. Um, and again, what, what the health insurance escrow is, um, that is for if you fully retire with the retire um, with the um, with the city yes. of Green Bay and yes. with um, if you and you have to retire within the Wisconsin retirement system, any outstanding sick dollar um, sick uh, balances that you have, you can convert to this ex escrow account, and that can be used for health insurance. It could be used for active health insurance or paying. I'm sorry, not active. It could be used for a city. Um, um, Co um, Cobra health insurance going forward, or you can pay for uh, any kind of health insurance and then get reimbursed for it. So this um, fund is, um, you also have the option if you have health, um, vacation, at, again, when you fully retire with the city and Wisconsin retirement system, you can also, if you have had any vacation time, you can also allocate it to this bucket. And then again, you can use it for health insurance going forward. Um, as you will see, um, the program has been discontinued for any new employees to, uh, starting in 2000 and 11 or 12 and but it still continues for police and fire so to the 900,000 or million that we need annually about 900,000 is for police and fire and about a hundred thousand are for the existing um, administrative or uh, general employees okay uh, Pam has confirmed that this page has not been printed correctly we have um, allocated and budgeted nine hundred thousand dollars within the budget so it, it the 
there should be a there should be a line administrative services there should have been a hundred thousand for the general employees okay okay so as you see the, the the this report was printed incorrectly you're seeing the negative line on top um, so administrative services should have been a hundred thousand police should have been 650 and fire should have been 150 and that would have been I'm sorry it would have been it would be a total of 900,000 yeah. and then accidentally the revenues got rolled up in here also and that's why you're seeing a negative 800 so when what, it, what I'm trying to say it is should be nine hundred thousand dollars worth of expense and then when we get to the revenue page you're gonna see nine hundred thousand dollars of levy to offset and pay for this um, line item so we budgeted 900,000 in 2019 and we're budgeting to 900,000 in 2020. Uh, we are projected to end 2019 at about $1.1 million. So we will be over our budget and that's just based on retirees, the timing of when they go and what they have left in their balances. Okay. Any questions, any other questions on that? Okay, I'll take entertain a motion to approve the health insurance escrow account. So moved. Oh, everybody. Motion to move that. Um, Alder Corpus Dex moved and seconded by Alder Lefebvre. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Revenue, general fund, page 182. Anything we need to know about the revenue fund? Director? Uh, yeah. The second line item, that's the 42 million, that is what we would be at this point looking to levy for the general fund. Um, the, the rest of items should be consistent, um, in most cases year over year. Um, the same items have been, we have revenue in those line items. We had a few large decreases. We had a large decrease in our utility aid, but then we also had an offsetting um, increase in our state aid for general transportation aids, which kind of washed them there. One was down 300,000, one went up 300,000. So okay. um, that was one large change that we had seen. Um, and everything up until page <laughs> 193 are for the general fund revenues. Okay, so then page two, page 193. All right, so we're going to be approving, yes, from 182 yes, to 193. From 182 to 193. Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Elder Galvin. There's second. Second. Second by Elder Corpus Dax. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right, the next part is revenue sanitary sewer, um, which begins on page 194. The only thing I would add about this one is any time you would change your revenues, you would also have to change your expense because the sanitary storm expenses and revenues, just like general fund, have to balance. So if you were to make one, it would off have an offsetting. Exp okay, I understand. Any other any questions on page 194? No. Entertain a motion to approve. Motion. motion to approve by Alder Galvin. Second. Second by Alder Corpus Dex. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion carries. Revenue parking utility. Seems we're expecting to issue more parking tickets next year. Is that what it? Is that what I'm seeing? What? The rates went up for the parking tickets. Same amount of tickets, higher cost. Okay. Any uh, concerns or questions on the parking utility? Entertain a motion to approve. Motion to approve by Alder Galvin, second by Alder Dorf. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. DPW equipment replacement, page 196. There's a lot of zeros on this page. Um, okay. Situation where, um, as we discussed earlier, and um, that was the question was asked, um, both park um, DPW and parks 
um, in the past have transferred out money out of this their general fund and they moved it into this 203 fund so we wouldn't levy money into it but they were spending it out of this account so we left this number in here to show you that last year they are going to spend about 1.5 million dollars out of this um, 203 fund this year as an accounting change we have stopped moving it into this 203 fund put and put it back in the general fund it was still the same dollars but we were just you weren't seeing it how they were spending it so it was mostly equipment repairs and some insurance and um, I mean I'm sorry equipment repairs gas and um, propane so it's just really like account an accounting it was change. accounting change to make it a little easier to see on the general okay. operating side all right that makes sense any questions on that seeing none Entertain a motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve by Elder Galvin. Second. Second by Elder Corpus Dex. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, revenue storm sewer, page 197. Okay. Any questions about the storm sewer? Budget. All right. Entertain a motion to approve. Motion, motion approved by Alder Galvin. Second. Second by Alder Lefebvre. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. The last page, page 20, I mean page 3, <laughs> page 29, Bay Beach. And page 2, I'm sorry, number 29, Bay Beach, page 200. That was Bay Beach Revenues. We saw that somewhere else. Okay. Any questions on that short page? Motion approved by Alder Galvin. Second. Second by Alder Corpus Dex. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Debt service, page 201. Questions on debt service? All right. Entertain a motion. Motion to approve by Elder Galvin. Second. Second by Elder Corpus Dex. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Revenue Equipment Replacement Funds, page 203. Any, um, any questions, comments? Entertain a motion. Motion to approve by Alder Galvin. Second by Alder Dorf. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Revenue Neighborhood Enhancement, page 208. I didn't miss anything. Okay. Um, any questions on that? Looks like it matches their budget pretty well. All right. Motion to approve so moved. by Alder Corpus Dex. Second. Second by Alder Lefebvre. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Revenue Workers' Compensation, page 209. Any questions? Entertain a motion. So moved by Alder Lefebvre. Second by Elder Galvin, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Um, revenue general liability, page 210. Okay, any questions? Okay, motion, motion to approve by Elder Galvin? Second. Second by Elder Corpus Dex, all those in favor? Aye. And uh, Revenue Health Insurance Escrow, page 211. Okay. The 900000 that we were talking about before. This page is correct. This page is correct. Um, any uh, motion? Motion. So moved. motion to approve by Alder Corpus Dex. Um, second by Alder Galvin. I see we just have informational left. Should we take a little break or do you want to just go right on through? I'm just joking. Yes, go ahead. I just had one thing I wanted to make uh, everybody aware of. Uh, it's in the budget, but we didn't necessarily discuss it within the operations division, but there is a pretty significant operational change that's coming forward in 2020, and it is reflected in the budget. Um, 
as of December 1st of 2019, so just over a month from now, Brown County and the Wisconsin Department of Transportation will be assuming operation of the three downtown lift bridges. So we have removed the bridge tenders from our table of organization. Mm -hmm. Again, it's, it's pretty significant to how we've operated that bridge, or all three of the bridges in the past. Uh, the Walnut Street and Mason Street bridges are owned by DOT. The Rainichke Memorial Bridge at Main Street is actually owned by the city, and we will then have uh, the county operating our bridge on our behalf. So the expenses for the bridge tenders for salary and benefits have been removed from the operations division, and likewise within the uh, 503 organization, uh, my Department of Public Works Operations Group, the revenues for the bridge uh, reimbursements are likewise reduced, but it's because of that's a reimbursement for the for the salaries and benefits for the bridge okay. tenders. So but it's budget neutral. It's budget. Yeah, it, it all they always have been budget okay. neutral because we're directly reimbursed from the state. But if you hear anything, if you know uh, about the bridge tenders or changes, we wanted to make sure uh, that you were aware of that and that it is reflected in the budget. Just wanted to make that informational point for you. Okay. All right. Under informational, the um, 2019 contingency account, 60808000 Wait. No, that's how you said that. cents. <laughs> it's been a long afternoon. Um, the next personnel committee meeting will be held Tuesday, November 12, 2019 at 430. The next finance committee meeting will be held Tuesday, November 12, 2019 at 430. Yes. Oh, Alder Bernat. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Chair. I just want to, if you could, uh, just make it known that there were no changes to the mayor's proposed budget. So there were no changes. So it's approved okay. as you I mean, assuming you'll approve it, but the approval will be as is, as presented. Is that well, correct? I just want to make sure I'm following correct. I didn't know if I missed anything. Yeah. I don't think so. I mean, I don't think we don't make an, a general motion right now to to approve it, do we? The whole thing. I think historically, at this point, they would ask what changes have been made. What is what what revenues went up? What um, expenses okay. went down? And, and to the Alder's point, there has been no changes to the budget uh, proposed budget. Um, so last year's mill rate was nine dollars and sixteen cents. Um, it is it is proposed to be at nine dollars and forty five cents, which is three dot three point two percent increase. And the and expense wise, it went up about two point three million dollars overall in to, um, total expenses. Okay. And I guess I'm at, um, and look at either the attorney or um, Director Grenier. Do we have to take a um, a total um, motion on the whole budget as presented? Just as long as they've approved every line item, every department within the budget. So um, I think we're good because you have approved every line item that was uh, listed on the agenda. Okay. So just to echo what Alder Burnett said, we have made no changes at this time to the budget presented to us. Okay. Um, anything else? Motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn, Motion to adjourn by Alder Galvin. Oh. What? <laughs> Second? By Elder Lafave. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We are adjourned. Do I want to shut down the system? Do I want to shut down the system, Mike? Okay. <laughs>